It's Thursday, and you know what that means. Welcome to the latest Max Wrestling special event. It is, of course, Trivia Takeover Part 9, Trivia Goes to Hell. This is your captain speaking with the one we call El Jefe Motes Marquez, here to discuss every single twist and swerve in pro wrestling. Coming up tonight, I'm doing half of it this week because there's so much to get through. Ricochet is flying the nest. We predict tomorrow night's TNA against all odds. Beer will give us the highs and lows of NXT Battleground. And Naito is coming for Moxley. Oh my goodness, if there's not more to add, there is. Also coming up tonight, we're talking about announcements. Mike Larkin is here to make an announcement. A first-time trivia, or sorry, promo exhibition as I take on that bastard, Chris Reed. The King of the Mic rolls on as Charisma debuts against Phoenix in two title matches as Cypher and Travis the Walker Anderson, or sorry, the Coach Anderson, I should just call him, challenge Beer and myself for the Tag Team Championships. And it is three stages of knowledge for Beer as he challenges the unbeatable Phoenix for the crazy popular Knowledge Championship. Make sure you subscribe right here on the YouTube's Max Wrestling YouTube because there's a whole bunch to get through. Make sure you're following us on all the lovely platforms for the, the podcast, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever it is you get your podcasts. And, of course, head on over to the beautifully done website, maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com, for all your links and a whole bunch freaking more. Damn right. So, Beer will be joining us momentarily for, of course, he has double trivia duty tonight. Oi. But first, let's kick it off with the fun stuff, because some people think a hammerlock is a way of keeping your tools safe. And as a result, this is shit Mark say. Hammerlock. I'm gonna tweet me and my friend Mark, we're gonna stop watching. You're a whiny bitch. Um, EO Sky has just been announced uh, for Marigold. Some, some was it? I forgot where the, she's fucking going. Somewhere in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna wrestle in Japan. I don't know for I don't remember what for what promotion. No, that's what I'm trying to see. But anyway, um, she's wrestling Utami, um, Hayao Shishida, and Kevin with a, a South Park avatar. Very good. Oh God, is that I Timmy? That I think it's Timmy. So, <laughs> <laughs> which explains a lot. Kevin says. This will obliterate anything AEW is doing with Mina Shirakawa and Tony Storm. All they're doing is selling a TNA lesbian T and a lesbian angle between Mina, Tony, and Mariah with Tony's title as an afterthought. Mina's a good wrestler, but TK is neglecting that in favor of selling sex. Uh, well, first of all, it's not obliterating anything AEW is doing with Mina Shir- Shirakawa because people have actually heard of this promotion. Marina Shirakawa came from. It's called Stardom. Yep. Uh, no disrespect to wherever Eo's going, but I don't know where the fuck it is. Same. And it's again, it is not a it is not a downplay. Pardon me. Um, but let's keep it let's keep it funky as we can around here. Um, so uh, let's. Okay, I'm, I'm really trying to compose myself <laughs> because, like, he and I'm not. And I'm going to be honest. He has a little bit of a point. <laughs> but here's the whole thing. Mina Shirakawa is a lot more known than whoever EO is facing. A lot more well known. Um, is it a sex thing? Not all of it. That's just Mina's Mind character. Games. That's just who she is. You have to understand that that's just how some of these people get over in Japan, that they're a, a, a sex symbol or whatever have you, or they're, you know, a pop idol is actually how they consider it. But, you know, they're a little over. Uh, they're not to our fucking standards, if you will fucking america weird um but it's it it's not like again you're it one's on a pay-per-view the other one's going to be on a on a nothing show that i don't know if you're actually going to be able to see if you are you're going to have to spend special money you're not going to recognize anybody else on that show it's it, it's like when they sent um william regal's kid over to pro oh, was it pro wrestling noah yeah it's like when they did that what exposure did he really get besides Japanese exposure? None. What more EOs? What more exposure is Io Shirai going to get going over to Japan and wrestling whomever she's wrestling? Not really a whole lot. She's going to get a pop in Japan. And that's about it. In this instance, Mina Shirakawa, yes, whether it be a TNA, tits and ass, sex kind of thing where, you know, she likes to use the word, oh, sexy, you know, whatever, all this other shit. 
fine, whatever. Who gives a fuck? Are we or are we not already um, if, to continue with this? I guess le- the thing that killed me about the lesbian thing. <laughs> weren't we already down that road with her and Tony Storm? Yeah, a little bit. And I'm, also, like, is Liv Morgan not currently using sex appeal to fuck with Dominic? Hey. Hey, look at that. When, look when was that. the last time she defended her title? I mean, Has she defended her like title? She's dry humping Don. She's dry humping him right now. Right. So you're telling me Liv's title is not an afterthought behind all this sex appeal stuff with Dom, or is that a different story? Mr. That's Kevin story. <laughs> you know, it has it has two dubs and an E in it. So it has to be a totally different ballgame. That's the thing. It's the double standard. And you know what, dude? Maybe it's because it's a little bit more sex appeal on AEW side. So what you're telling so, so uh, to go back to last week when we got the whole Pride Month thing and uh, fucking mm-hmm. I don't want to say I don't think it was Lou, it was some other jackass that we made fun of Lou. Um Made the whole, you know, where's my pride flag and all this other shit. Um, bro, like, this is, we're, we're back in the same boat. You know what I mean? Um, we're not, throw, nobody's throwing nothing in your face. This is, this is just, what, what welcome to wrestling. I don't, yeah. I lost my train of thought because this is so <laughs> fucking stupid. Go, go, I literally had Mickey a good James old point is, about uh, what I was talking about. Go watch Mickey James' WWE debut rivalry with Trish. Nobody complained then. They complain now. Nobody complained then. Oh, yeah. One particular spot gets edited out now. Wait a minute. No, hold on. I, I, I do remember my point. Didn't we have somebody who fucking said that there should be, uh, that there was like a women's four-way of AEW? They were like, oh, yeah, you should make it a fucking bra and panties match. That's the only way I'll yeah. make it entertaining. Yeah. So, again, so if other people in your realm, Mr. South Park character have her, um, it, it's all about the sex appeal and the, I would rather see these bitches half naked, or sorry, these competitors half naked, than just go with the story. What the fuck, dude? So Liv gets a pass. Uh, Mickey, uh, Mickey gets a pass. Um, who else is using some fucking cheeks right now to go? Oh, so, so fucking Rhea Ripley gets a pass. <laughs> so you're telling me Rhea Ripley gets it because she's a dominatrix. That that's literally how she ended up with Dom. She she beat him up. She took in, in love with her. Hey, I think she, we'd she all beat be in some the same love boat. into him, but uh. But again, double standards. Yes, and I'm sorry to beer miss that one, but he's going to be here for this next one. Let's get beer on the show. <laughs> all right, get on. It. He's he's going to be so disappointed that he missed oh, the, live, sure the Liv is. Morgan conversation. Yeah, Speaking of shit, Mark say. <laughs> Badoo ba uh, you just missed the first one, but you're just in time for the next one. Um, obviously Ricochet is gone, going, written off, either way, finishing up with WWE. Um, and Tony Khan was asked about it, and very, very professionally, he said, I'd rather not get into wrestlers that still work for someone else. That's the official quote. Um, geez, Louise, the response from this guy, his, his name is actually, huh? That's not surprising at all. That's literally his Twitter handle. That that makes all the sense in the world. Um, he says, Tony finally learning how to be professional when in front of the media. Rare W. You're not wrong. However, he would have gotten in trouble if he'd have said something about Ricochet because he's still under fucking contract. But, okay. So, when has he not been professional about shit like this? That's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to go backwards on some stuff. I understand Tony is not the greatest speaker to the media, especially about talent that could be available. But when has he ever put his foot in his mouth in such a negative way that you need to be, oh, he finally got a W for being professional. Yeah, I don't think he's ever been asked about a wrestler working for another promotion. No. Especially WWE. No, I don't think so. I mean, maybe, oh yeah, I was about to say, especially WWE. Let's go with that. Especially WWE. But that again, if you're gonna take his his poor management skills, which again, which is all this is we're reflecting off of anyway, if you're gonna take his poor management skills and apply it to this, you're already in the fucking wrong. You have no argument. And yes, I get it. Yes, it is a W. Oh my god, he's finally a pro or whatever. But again, in situations like this, he's always been a pro. So you take you would you you're, you're the guy poking the dead body with a stick just cause. 
You want a reaction out of the dead body? Come on, do something. I made a good comment. Show me some love. Ah, fuck off. <laughs> and also, let's not forget, there was a time when Tony called out WWE for tampering with contracts in AEW. Mm-hmm. So he's been on the receiving end of that, so he's not stupid enough to go in front of a public media and, like, talk about a contracted wrestler with WWE. Not lupid enough. Isn't his contract by the end of July or July? I, that's what I heard. Is it July? Yeah. I thought it was the end of June. Maybe I, maybe they wrote him off early to be nice. Well, you already know how it goes. Fucking get him off TV, no compete for so long. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be even longer now because he's off TV now, I guess, until the end of his contract. Then he's going to have the no compete. So he'll be available come what? November? Yeah, he yeah. No if he hasn't been released, there will be no, com- there'll be no, uh, no compete. Yeah, he's con- oh yeah, his contract's just expiring. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so he doesn't have it, a no. So. He's a- yeah, so July, in July, August, even he'll fucking be available. It might be, maybe we'll see this guy back in Japan. You know, King Ricochet or if I could. Everybody's obviously saying AEW, especially now that Will Ospreay's there. It's a, it, you have to, right? I think you it's have always to. a conversation. Yeah, somebody leaves WWE. Hey, they go to AEW. Maybe, hold your horse. Maybe it's not. Not everybody has to go. I've said it before. Not everybody has to go. You can go to TNA now and get recognized. Hell, fucking, uh, the fucking Nemeth brothers for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, I, I feel I feel a little bad for Nick because you know he was a lot bigger of a star, but his brother. Yeah. Thanks to him, elevated. They're a cool little fucking tag team to watch now. You know what I mean? TNA is not a bad place to be. Um, no, and, and look at Mustafa Ali. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was like, isn't he on a Killer X Division run right now? Murdering it. He's so dominant. There's there's places to go make a name. Hell, like I like I mentioned Japan because I mean that. And then you you know who's hungry for fucking American talent? Japan. Yeah. So he would fucking murder. He'd kill out there. They always were talking about making him heavyweight champ or him competing in the heavyweight realm. There you go. There's your wide open opportunity. Possible. Um, I guess we got to wait till uh, July to find out, though. He would be insane in that X division, though, in TNA. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I can already imagine him and Chris Bay. Go there as well. Then his non competes up. Ooh. That's not the good one. The too. good thing is, like new contracts now, they don't have no competes. They got rid of that thing. Good. That was a Vince Super. thing. Yeah, that was a Vince thing. That was a Vince thing. And you can see how Triple H is more reasonable because he's given Ricochet closure. Like he's actually written him off TV. I mean, TNA probably would have fucking given him a drive by shooting or something and hey, writing him off TV like they've done before. Oh, you're out leaving TNA? Okay, we're going to murder you on TV. Huh? Eric Young got killed on TV. Eric Young got killed, then he returned, and then they filmed a new segment where, like, okay, so we didn't actually see him die. It was <laughs> off got, camera, he so shot here in the face or something. he he revived. Oh yeah, from a fucking like, was it a gunshot? Um, no, it was um, what's his name? Dino stabbed him to death. Oh, that's right. So he, like, went, okay, he went yeah, full Norman alive. Bates on him. Um, we, we're probably not going to see Ali in TNA again because we literally saw a Freddy Krueger glove get shoved through her throat. Yeah, I know. Doubt it. She, she dead, dead. Well, she's gone, man. She's gone. <laughs> I tell you, he did. Oh, All right. Um, <clears throat> the hey, hey, it, it was Marigold, that uh, Japanese company that EOS guy ah. is going to. That was yeah, the name I still of the don't promotion. know. So, Sorry, that, that, that gets another mention here. Uh, <laughs> it is a hilarious tweet. Somebody says WWE slash Cyberfight slash Marigold slash TNA versus AEW slash CMLL slash New Japan slash Stardom is a hilarious development. But the response is even better. <clears throat> uh, Raiden X Gargano, sorry, but he's already married, says CMLL and Stardom is carrying so hard. But they still lose simply because being partnered with AEW doesn't help. WWE is cooking with these partnerships. Feels more major. It hasn't really kicked off yet with the WWE. Really? No. I was just kidding. We've only had um, Joe at the minute in NXT. And that's it. 
And sorry, but I don't think you can get bigger than AEW teaming with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay, so you know what, Beer, you're, you're the NXT guy. You watch Battleground. Um, they did it at the uh, 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 in Vegas with the, the UFC thing, right? Apex, yeah. Okay, how many fucking, and I'm going to ask you this, being a, a non-MMA guy, how many noticeable fighters did they show off? About, in terms of my, I've noticed, I've not, I've never heard of any, except the one with the, is it the Shevchenko one? Oh, yeah, Shevchenko, everybody heard of Shevchenko. That was probably the only one I even noticed, if I'm very honest with you. But that's my point. Unless you're a fucking diehard fan, you're not going to know any of these fuckers. So the cyber fight thing is already out the fucking window. You pointed out beautifully about TNA, where one person has come through the door. Mm-hmm. One now, granted, she's a great competitor. I'm not gonna never down, never downplay Jordan Grace, not a one bit. But it's one CMLL. They had already two competitors just last night on Dynamite. They've had other people come in already in the past, and now it looks like they're already set up to be a big part of Forbidden Door, especially with Stardom. Mira Shirakawa is not the only one that has come down from Stardom. Hell, um, fucking did Mariah May literally leave there to come to AEW? Yes. So again, like it, these are connections that have been made. I get it, dude. I can I understand a bit. TNA is a little bit big, more of a recognizable. Let me use that terminology. It's more of a recognizable name than a CMLL, and maybe is a little more recognizable than Stardom. But again, if you know women's wrestling, you know Stardom. Yeah. So I get it, but you throw Cyber Fight in there like anybody gave a fuck. Okay. Nobody gives a fuck about cyber fight. Nobody. It, it just it's 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 ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous because again it's and then we go back to the um what did I say in the in the first one where it's um just uh, the fucking pure spite of AEW just because they're the opposite they're the competitor they're the guys that's not WWE the quote unquote big time everything they do is shit anybody they partner with is shit. New Japan is not a reputable company, but we'll take AJ Styles, Cody Rhodes, and fucking a handful of other fucking people. But New Japan ain't shit because they work with AEW. Oh, fucking half the handful of CMLL guys didn't Andrade fucking was main champion for CMLL forever. But oh, CMLL ain't shit. Nah, they just it's... lost the mark. So, because every right. forbidden door that we see, it's always been a banger show. Yeah, always. Um. One last year with Osprey and Omega is probably one of the best matches I've ever seen. And and like for comparison, WWE is working with TNA for the first time in fuck how old are they now? Twenty two huh. years. When originally in two thousand two, because I remember Shamrock yeah. was the first yeah, ever. Twenty two. So TNA has been around twenty two years, and now WWE finally decided to work with them because they don't have any money anymore. No, stop Whereas, it. they work with one person. Stop it. They're okay, one person from TNA. They're working with one person. <laughs> but the um, talks, apparently, that the Rascals are going to be on to come and help Wesley in his match with Gallus that's coming very soon. So yeah. I smell that heat wave. So, Drew's also so like mentioned Joe Hendry because how can you not? So like in the land of footy, rumors are rumors, and until it actually happens, it's all yeah. speculation. Uh, yeah, exactly. Speculation, so, as you know, but I've not no confirmation yet. And then, for comparison, nice. AEW has already established long-running working relationships with New Japan, biggest wrestling company in Japan, CMLL, yeah. oldest Lucha Libre company in the world, mm-hmm. and Stardom, the number one women's promotion in Japan. Yeah. But, appara- but apparently that's not a big deal. Apparently it's not a big deal. Well, Marigold's only two months old, so that's that's gonna oh, that's fuck why, off. That's Still. why we never heard of it. <laughs> oh yeah, I I've, I've kept an eye on Marigold. Well, like like we said, no disrespect, but we'd never heard of it before. Yeah, it's, it's recently um, a new promotion by Rossi because man, we got the we got the boot the need from from Stardom. So this yeah, is, Julie is only there just to help from the get go, and then she's obviously she's going to NXT. So uh, she's only had an injury as well, so we're not sure when. A debut next is going to be could be a while. I don't know, but that's she's having a match with Siri soon. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. Well, like I said, I saved the best for last because oh, I cannot wrap my hand head around this tweet. Um, it comes from Mike 
with a WWE in his Twitter handle because, of course. Fuck him, said Mike, and I got nervous. Just because you put WWE in your Twitter handle does not mean you have any association with the WWE. Disclaimer there. Um, and he's got a nice little bench press in his avatar. So he says, <clears throat> anyone who watches wrestling apart from WWE should be put on a list. It's all pedo shit. Bullshit. Sorry, what? All Wait, so it's okay. <laughs> It's okay to watch the wrestling that is specifically catered towards kids, but it's not okay to watch other wrestling which is more targeted at grown-ups. This is that, that what you're saying? Pedo shit. <laughs> Apart from WWE, WWE is okay. This is the company that had the uh, the billionaire with a sex case, sex hey. abuse allegation, all this stuff, misconduct. No, hold on, wait, no, no, my man hey. said Peter. Or, or, the man, not my man, not my man, not at all. Uh, <laughs> the fella said pedo shit. Yeah. Let, so let's let's give him some pedo shit. Didn't WWE crown a twelve-year-old tag team champion? Yep. Yeah. It was the referee's son. All righty. Um, didn't WWE bring in? Oh uh, God, how old was fucking Paige when they brought her in? Uh, I believe she was under eighteen when they originally brought her in. I want to say she was 17 when she first started out. She was 13 when she had her first match. Hey. I think it was 19 when she when okay. she won the well, women's hey. from AJ. Oh, I'm close. She was 18 when she won the title. The pedo shit. But okay, okay fine. Let's go. Let's go to the dark side of it all real fast. I don't mean to be cutting y'all off. Let's go to the dark side of it all real fast. Um, this is one of the biggest fucking rumors. If we're gonna live in the land of rumors, according to other fucking marks on this lovely segment. Um, if we're gonna live in the land of rumors. Wasn't Stephanie McMahon fucking around with Macho Man when she was 13? That's only meant to be rumored. We don't know whether that's true or not. But again, if we're living in the land of speculation like some of these motherfuckers do and they're calling out the pedo shit, let's give them the pedo shit. Didn't, they want uh, the pedo. Didn't they have a ladder match for a custody of a child? Hey. Who, who now wrestles for that company? Yep. Did it? Hold on, wait a minute. And I know that she maybe just turned 18 or 19, but didn't they portray Rey Mysterio's daughter to be underage and, and uh, fucking homeboy made out with her? Oh, buddy yeah, a, there was a big age gap between Aaliyah and uh, Buddy. Mm -hmm. Like, so again, bro. That was Vince Bucking. It, it, it's, again, it's the speculation. If Vince McMahon or the E is behind it, it ain't pedo because it's quote unquote made for kids. But because, but because the more adult program has, and, and I'm going to have to blame this on Mina because it's all her fault for being just so goddamn gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's all her fault. That's what it is. Everybody's just so mad. It's just so jelly. It's, <laughs> she brings sex appeal. The fucking days of the tits and ass of the fucking old WWF are gone. And AEW, in a way, is slowly... I wouldn't even say them. It's more her, because that's her character. She's taking advantage of the horny Americans. So who are we to get mad at her for? Who are we to get mad? But you want to get... You want to say pedo shit? I listed a whole bunch of stuff WWE has done that AEW will never do. Never do. If you want to bring up uh, fucking uh, Brody Lee's son, he's never once compete, actually competed. He's never once randomly been in a match. Has he been around? For sure. But that's about it. That's not... Again, so then again, if you're going to call that pedo, then you rope in Dominic when he was little, fucking around with him and his dad. The custody battle, the ladder match, the whole shebiggity. So, double standards, fam. Double. Double standards. I agree. <clears throat> but they are marks, and that's the shit they say. You guys suck. <laughs> well, so, um... Let's be fair. We have four matches tonight, so how about we give you the first one right now? Last week, Cypher and Beer announced in the King of the Mic, announced, advanced in the King of the Mic, and will face each other in the semifinals. So let's find out who will face Chris Reed. It's time for the official debut of Charisma, as he stands in the way of Grand Slam Phoenix.
Hello. Uh, so, it's that time of year again. Time for King of the Mic. And who's my first opponent? Some discount wannabe Bret Hart or a discount Walmart Agent 47 called Charisma. Which I do find kind of ironic considering he's probably got just as much charisma as Chuck E. Cheese falling through a tuba. And you know what? Normally this is one of my favourite times of year. But this year it's different. Because I don't care. I'm not going to go off and list my accomplishments again. But everyone knows I'm one away from reaching the Max Wrestling Grand Slam Championship. And yet somehow I feel, I feel like I'm back to where I was three, four years ago before I stepped foot in, on this side of the camera and cut my very first promo. <clears throat> now don't get me wrong, I'm honored to be the Max Wrestling Knowledge Champion again. Most of last year, my own blood the captain was TV champion, and not once did he think to offer me a title shot. Instead, he gave it to Chris Reed. He actually gave him about, about three chances in the space of like two months. And the lawyer was handed the TV title from Moses because reasons, I guess. Slap my badonka donk. I mean, I get it. It gives me a break from the top spot, and not everyone can remain in that top spot forever. But when was the last time I had a title shot? Where, you know, where's my title shot? And yet, how many chances has the likes of the lawyer, Travis, Moses, Chris Reed, Teddy P, Cypher, so on, all of them? How many, how many chances have they had? <sighs> Compared to how many I've had. Why do you, what, seriously, why do you think I've been calling out random people for the last few months? Anyways, that's about it. I think I've ranted enough. I'm just, I just wanted to use this time to air out a few grievances. As I said, as far as the tournament goes, I don't care. You literally cannot pay me to give a shit and as far as this charisma bitch goes you can eat the ass of a rabid raccoon without any milk goodbye Telling you, buddy, you should have seen the titties on this giraffe. They were Excuse amazing. Me, uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Charisma is facing the Phoenix. What are your thoughts about it? Charisma is facing the Phoenix. What are your thoughts about it? First off, my name is not just Rodney. My name is Rodney Slap a bitch. Cause that's exactly what I'll do. <laughs> and as far as how I feel about charisma facing the Phoenix, well, before this. Six foot eight, seven foot five, ten foot three monster cuts a scathing promo on the Phoenix. He's first asked me, Rodney Slapovich, to say a few things on his behalf. The Phoenix. Did you know that Phoenix's first name is Craig? <laughs> I mean, essentially, he's a white guy with the name of a black guy who gets fired on his day off. <laughs> It's Friday, bitch! <laughs> and you know what else? I see this profile picture on Facebook, and I gotta say, Craig Phoenix looks like AJ Styles fuck Toby Maguire! <laughs> but you know what? Enough about Craig Phoenix, because he's old. And he's born, and he's washed up. I mean, yeah, there was a time where he was a double champion, or a triple champion, or a triple champion. I don't know what the fuck he was doing.
But you know what he's doing now? Nothing but sitting around drinking a crumpets and tea. <laughs> but we don't give a fuck about crumpets and tea because charisma, he's new, he's young, he's fast, he's strong, he is a monster. And he's come here to not just take down Craig Phoenix and clip his fucking wings off, but he's here to hurt everybody. Nobody's gonna stand in the way of charisma. Nobody stands a chance, and certainly not Craig Phoenix. <laughs> you know what? If I were Craig Phoenix, I would gracefully bow out and go take a, a holiday, as they call it. <laughs> Guess what? A holiday is Christmas over here, bitch. Anyways, the last thing that I want you to know, which I know you already know, Craig Phoenix, and I know that everybody at Max Wrestling knows, is that there is nobody in the King of the Mike tournament who stands a chance at stopping the monster that is Charisma. But I'm not just gonna let you take my word for it, riding this lap a bitch. Instead, why don't we hear from the man himself? It's a moment you've all been waiting for. Charisma, do you think that Craig Phoenix can beat you? Ain't no way. <laughs> Craig Phoenix, fuck you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, people just watched that and wondering how I'm going to spin this. Phoenix went 2 minutes 58 seconds. Again, before I uh, give you Charisma's time, let me remind you of TV rules and King of the Mic. Longest promo wins. Unless you go three minutes more than your opponent, then you're disqualified. So, Phoenix went 258, and Charisma went two seconds. <laughs> Although, technically, Rodney Slabovich went three minutes and 16. So, and we, we kind of have a predicament here, because that was like a two-person promo. And... Charisma's manager did most of the talking And his promo was technically longer So I'm going to make an executive decision Both of them Will advance to the semifinals hey. And face Chris Reed in a triple threat match In two weeks Ooh. So much for a fucking uh, well, What do you have a fucking bye week to the semis Jesus Christ yeah, now he's got two opponents in the semis. <laughs> well, congratulations to both of them. Now, as we heard last week, we are about to hear from Mike Larkin. He's got an announcement for us all, so sit down, buckle up, because here comes the podcast machine. You know, it's been a long time since I've held Max Wrestling Championship gold. And for a man who thought that he did it all, maybe there's more to obtain and accomplish. I want to be a champion that you could be proud of. Hell, I was that once upon a time. When I was the Max Wrestling Promo Champion and Knowledge Champion, I defended those championships with honor, respect, and dignity. I took on all comers. I gave you my blood, sweat, and tears in each and every one of my performances that I had and did. I gave you a fight. Can I say the same for you? I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Chad Malcolm, I challenge you at Money Shot for the Max Wrestling Television Championship. I'm cool, calm, and collective now, but once we get to Money Shot, the gloves are off. No contracts, no loopholes, no bullshit. And in closing, I just have one question for you, Chad. Want to fight? Legion. 
As you can see, I have already made this match official. Call it my birthday present to the lawyer. And to ensure there are no more loopholes taken, from now on, all TV rules promos must be at least three minutes. Enjoy your 4th of July, Mr. Malcolm. Well, I guess uh, that's official for the TV title at Money Shot, thanks to that masked bastard and our mascaras making it official. Uh, but from one title to another, it is time for the tag team titles to finally be defended. Let's go. Let's go, fam. All right, all right, all right. Here we are, boys and girls, ready for another edition of watching me and beer retain the tag team championships. Ha, 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 ha. Who am I kidding? I am up against the Carolina Reapers. These guys are no jokes. And it's Corey. It's my man, Trav. Yes, it's all love around here, especially in the Triv game. So, boys, let's jump into it. You already know the game. Tag team trivia knowledgery, if we will. Ten questions each. Y'all get ten today. And then I will take care of uh, me and Beer live on the show. Y'all ready for y'all ten? Beer is only walking out. Beer two belts over my dead body. I'm just kidding. Let's do this. We are definitely ready. I love it already. The confidence is ridiculous. Beer will will uh, will strike a, a shake a fist at you if you if you will if he heard you talking all the mess that you do. So let's start off with the first question, probably my favorite question. As we go to the land of the rising sun, we talk in Japan, boys. We're talking Japan in 1972, New Japan Pro Wrestling was formed. But in what year was the IWGP champion crowned? Yowzer. Oh, man. Lord knows I already know Moses has said this like a hundred times to me before. That'll be June 1987. I think it's June 12th. You really think it's like 87? Are we sticking with 1987? If you're confident with 87, I gotta trust my tag team partner and you can... And make that the final answer if you want. Well, he said IWGP championship. I don't know if that was heavyweight or not. They said it was uh, New Japan was formed in 72. Not in the 80s. It was 72. So, I mean, if you think it's 87, all right, final answer, 87. All right, we'll stick with 87, and actually it was crowned in 1983 when Hulk Hogan won the inaugural IWGP tournament. The current version of the IWGP heavyweight, light heavyweight, and all those funds was established in 1987. Ah, okay, I was close, but no cigar on the first one, but that's okay. We still got nine more to go, Trav. We got this. The knowledge was there, but it, there was a swerve. All right, so since I like to stick with the stuff that I like, we go from the land of the rising sun to the mat. So, both Brock Lesnar and Gable Stevenson are former two-time All-American wrestlers, heavyweight wrestlers, for what Big Ten University? Uh, that would be the University of Minnesota. I, I was going to say Minnesota, too. So, yeah, definitely Minnesota. But now I definitely regret uh, changing one of the questions that we did have wrote for y'all. <laughs> Me and I sold a cat click the butter, don't you know? University of Minnesota is correct. All right, let's take it back to, uh, let's call it the WWF days. What two men made up the newly reformed team of the Rockers, now called the New Rockers? Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh... Corey, you got to carry me, bro. Once again, um, I have no idea about new rockers whatsoever. That would be Marty Jannetty and Leif Cassidy. about call him Leif? You should have called him Leif because that is his name, but I will accept it. Leif Cassidy. Leif Cassidy and Marty Jannetty formed the new rockers. You guys got that one right. Now give me a question that I know. <laughs> Well, here, maybe you'll know this one, and please listen to how I word this question so we'd have no further confusion. Besides Mick Foley, what other hardcore legend used a double-arm DDT as their finisher? 
Oh, Lord. Uh, I want to say that was... Uh, man. I'm so disappointed in myself. But I swear that was Terry Funk. I feel like Terry Funk did the same thing. Corey, how do you feel about Terry Funk? Or what's that Al Snow? Is Al Snow considered a hardcore legend? It's a hardcore legend. Um, it's no one current. Because I know Drew uses it and I know John uses it. But I think besides Mick Foley, I think Stevie Richards. Okay, we got a Terry Funk. We got a Stevie Richards. We had an Al Snow. Give me a final, gentlemen. Give me a final. Actually, I think uh, Terry Funk had a pile driver now that I'm thinking about it. Um, Corey, I'm, I'm trusting you. So I'll let you have it. I don't know. Because that's the... I know... I, I'm stuck between Terry Funk and Stevie Richards. But if I had to choose... Like... I don't know if Stevie Richards is a hardcore legend or not like Terry. Al Snow final answer. I'm I'm going to go with Stevie Richards on this one because honestly looking back at the hardcore title itself, I do believe he won it like 19 to 21 times. And if that's not hardcore legend for you, I don't know. So I'm going to go with Stevie Richards. That's my final answer. Watch it be like fucking Tommy Dreamer or something. I don't remember. I, I bet it's freaking Tommy Dreamer. The funniest thing about all this, bud, is yes, you should have went with Tommy Dreamer or you should have went with Raven because both of those men used, again, a double arm DDT as their finisher. Stevie Richards used the Stevie Kick. Uh, I'm not sure what Al Snow used. And yes, Terry Funk had a pile driver. Damn it. The ECW original. Now, see, I thought about Raven, but I, I, I just didn't think it was him. I never really seen too many Raven matches, so that one was really difficult. But then after all of that, I was like, damn, Tommy Dreamer. I knew that one. I've seen it. I've felt it almost. That one was... That, that one's... Dong. Hey Dazzy Lee, uh, check the check the rule book on that one. Remember, I'm still Dragon Club. Uh, technically, Tommy Dreamer was the last name said until uh, he gave the answer. Give it to us, damn it! Give me what I want. What do I gotta go back to a non? I'm sorry, I'm getting a little hyper. Yes, super close on that one. We'll get a Daz ruling and the whole shebang uh, at the end. Not Chad, because we obviously know why not Chad. But let's get into something that you friggin' should know, Travis. What two men made up the Minnesota Wrecking Crew? I hate you. I love you. But damn it, I hate you. <laughs> oh, God. Minnesota Wrecking Crew. Uh, God dang. I want to say that involved a Steiner. No, 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 damn it. You ain't gonna get me. You're not gonna get me, Moses. I got it. I remember it. It's got my name. It's motherfucking Gene and Lars Anderson. Anderson. Holy Jesus. Crime any good God almighty, he got it. I would have also given it to you if you would have hit me with the good old-fashioned Ole and Arn Anderson. But yes, the Anderson family is correct. <laughs> I forgot about Ole and Arn. <laughs> How did I get Gene and Lars, but I forgot Ole and Arn. Oh my god, next time I go see uh, Arn Anderson, I'll make sure to apologize. I'm glad you got that one. Alright, let's hop right into the next one. About 50% right now, if I'm not mistaken, and 3 out of 6. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Let's stick to the stuff that you should know. So, everybody knows that the Four Horsemen has had somewhat of an interchangeable fourth man for a while until we got into the older days of WCW. There had been weird fourth members such as Sid Vicious, Lex Luger, and Sting, who by chance is known as the worst Four Horsemen there's ever been. Oof. I feel like that could be fairly subjective. 
Um, but when I think about Four Horsemen, I think of what the Four Horsemen are, and there's only really one that I can think of that's just simply felt out of place. And I want to say that was Chris Benoit. So for anyone curious, this is not a, this is Mo's answer. This is what is globally recognized as the worst four horsemen. Fourth horseman, excuse me. Paul Roma? Do you want to go with Paul Roma or uh, Chris Benoit? I, I personally would like to go with uh, Chris Benoit. Um, I'm going to go with Paul Roma because I know that was for sure he was the worst. I mean, yeah that somebody else was a gajillion times worse. I can't think of his name, but Paul Roma is definitely the one. All right, Mo. You heard the man, Paul Roma. And the craziest thing about it is this time, Corey pulls Travis out of the dark end of the uh, the bad zone, if you will, and he, has, he hits the nail dead on the head. The man known as Paul Roma used to be WWF superstar, teaming with a guy named Hercules in the very dreadful early 90 days. So, yes, Paul Roma is correct. That is four out of six. Four more to go. Let's see how y'all finish. Yeah, see, that's the thing about trivia. Man, I, I know not to die on my sword. <laughs> I, I know I'm not the best at this, so I got to trust my boy. I got to trust my tag team partner. That's what tag team is all about. Okay, thank God. Okay, because I was about to freak the freak out. Thank you, Paul Roma, for being the worst member ever. I don't think I've ever actually heard anyone thank Paul Roma, so that has to hit be on the history book. So let's hop into the next one here, and this should be a good one. The New Age Outlaws were six-time WWE Tag Team Champions of the World. I had to do it. But they each held singles titles. Besides the Hardcore Championship, what belt did they each hold? Pretty sure it was the United States Championship. Oh shit! I know it's not the I know it's not the U.S. title. That's way too early. I think it's not the U.S. title. I think I think uh, it was the honor. It was the Intercontinental title. That it is. It has to be the Intercontinental title because it wasn't the U.S. title. I was teeter tottering between IC title and US title. Still think it might be the US title, but Corey, you're doing great. IC title. As a little little stidbit here, remember that the New Age Outlaws formed in 1997, or at least joined the uh, uh, DX in 97. So think of titles around that era. All right, and survey says. It is the Intercontinental Championship. I was trying to help to confuse y'all, make y'all maybe think of the European, not I'm a pin, European Championship. You about had me say European. You also had me almost say like a uh, cruiserweight of some sort too, but I was like, nah, I was teetering between uh, US and IC anyway, so I trusted my boy. Three more to go. Let's keep it rocking. Let's take it back. Across that pond, back to the land of the rising sun. But for some reference, while in WWF and WCW, he was known as the man they call Vader. But overseas, he was known as what? The worst part is, I have it on a t-shirt. I, I have a Vader shirt with that on there. Pretty sure he uh, used this name... Um, when he was like feuding with Will Ospreay too. Was it Big Van Vader? Is that what he used? I'm gonna go with Big Van Vader. That's fine with me. That sounds decent. I'll use Big Van Vader as a final answer. Big Van Vader is the correct answer. You guys are on a hot one looking about uh, about 80% could be higher if we get the other ruling. So we got two more to go. Let's see how y'all finish. Steve Mongo McMichael brought in a friend from the NFL by the name of Kevin Green. He had a short stint in WCW. How many matches exactly did he have in WCW? 
I could be completely wrong, but I think it was only one. That's the only, I, I can only think of one. Mean, mean Kevin Green, man. He had a very, very short run with a total of only five matches. He was only in like WCW for like what, uh, two years? Yeah, I was like, yeah, 96 and 98, right? Five, five, five. Let's go with five. 96 to 98 is correct. Yes, just five matches. Actually, I believe three of them on pay-per-view, believe it or not. So, yeah, there it goes. Add another one to the tally, and we are on to the final. All right, to stay in the land of the NFL for the last question, Jim Duggan and Bill Goldberg played for this NFL team. Hey, I don't know shit about NFL I don't know shit about football. Uh, so, Corey, good luck. This is on you. It's up to you. Bring it home. Bring those tag team championships to the Reapers. But if I was a betting man, I think it might be the Vikings or... No, the Bills. Because this question has been asked before in the past... And somehow I do remember it. <sighs> you know what, Trav? We're going to get this one. It's the Atlanta Falcons. You sure it's not Buffalo Bills? I'm sure. It's the Atlanta Falcons. Because I've, this question has been asked in the past. And I know Goldberg, and he played for the Atlanta Falcons. So, yeah. Atlanta Falcons, final answer. All right, all right. So... We can officially say that you guys scored 80% and can be looking at 90 if the other one is overturned. So, yes, obviously, with that being said, that is the correct answer. The funniest thing is the only NFL team Bill Goldberg played for was the Atlanta Falcons. So, again, 8 out of 10 with a possible 9 out of 10, and we will get that ruling. Bill, do you want to give him the point? Um... I don't want to come back to answers. <laughs> um, well, here's the reality, bro. Even if it doesn't, we we still got to score at least nine. Okay, Trust yeah. Me. So either if, way, if, we got to get at least nine. If you give him the point, then you two need a perfect score. Overdraw. If you don't give him the point, then you got a, yeah, yeah. a two point. I know, right? We're fucking me. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, that's so I ruled out. Well, that we just gave it to him. If it bites us, it bites us. Yeah, well, we gotta go for it. All right. Um, well, that that was recording. So, all right. If you both agree, uh, we will let that DDT point go. So it is nine out of ten for the North Carolina boys. North Carolina. Yes. Now, now fortunately, bastards. I do have their questions for you. So, based on their score. You guys need a perfect... Sc Actually, no. The titles don't change hands on a tie, on a draw. So, you only need the same score, really, to uh, retain. All right, let's ride. Let's do, let's do this. But a, but a perfect score would be nice. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. First question. WWF, Capital Carnage, had the infamous mixed tag match with Sable and Jacqueline. Who were their tag team partners? Mark Marrow. Yep. Who did Jacqueline have? Jacqueline uh, was with Mark Marrow. That's so then then who did Sable leave and go with? No, as was Sonny. Are you sure about that? Are you sure it wasn't the other way around? Yeah, it was Marrow okay. and Jacqueline, hundred percent confident. I'm a hundred yeah, I was about to say I'm hundred percent about Mark Marrow, but I'm always looking at him for the whole um fucking, you know. Sable side. Uh, who the fuck else did Sable manage? I'm in two minds. What do you mean? Um, anything? Edge. No, Edge was SummerSlam 98. I remember that. Christian. Edge. 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 Capital Carnage? Yeah, Capital Carnage. This is old as fuck, though. Yeah, wasn't this the one with Vinnie Jones? Yeah. And uh, Pat oh. Patterson red carded him. That's it, yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I remember that. 
Uh, Christian has definitely sprung to mind. Um, go on the lemma. Why is Christian not? Why do I feel like it is some fucking tag team dork arena? Um, well, fuck, hold on. Who else was? Okay, so. This was what? 97, 99, 90, 97, 99, 98? 98. 98. Okay. Um, oh, this is bugging me. 98, 98. Fucking. Um, I want, why, that sounds fucking stupid. My dumbass wants to say fucking like Farouk. I'm like, that's not right. Ah. Um. Oh, man, this is bugging me. Who the fuck else could have, okay. Not the Hardys, because the Hardys had, um, <coughs> what's her face? Terry Reynolds. Right. So Mark Merrow with Locked In, so we're just looking for Sable's partner. What's I have a question. You're sticking with Christian? I'm going to have to fucking lean on you, dude, because I, I can't think of anybody else. <laughs> it's not Edge. I'm really trying to picture, like, even young Edge with Sable, and it just doesn't. I don't see it. Um, Christian yeah. just doesn't sound right. But neither, but you know what? He was fucking light heavyweight champ. And I don't remember that fucking shit at all. His Xbox faced the rock. I remember that. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that vampire-looking motherfucker in that show? Gangrel. Gangrel? No, not Gangrel. The other one. The big, tall-looking motherfucker. Uh, Black hair. Can't remember anything. Probably, he was part of the ministry. Midian? Don't, I'm a thing. Dennis Knight. Yeah, that's before yeah. You, you got converted into Midian. I remember that. That was 99. Ah, too late in the game. And then late, later on, he was people running on willy-nilly through the streets. Hey, really. <laughs> um, fuck it. I'll I'll lean on you. And we'll go, Christian. So Mark Merrow and Christian. It was Mark Merrow and everybody's favorite stepfather, Christian. Yeah, baby. <clears throat> you got close right away when you said Edge, and I completely forgot that she even aligned herself with Edge or Christian. Yeah, it was not yet because that was Edge's first pick. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Banging stuff. Dude, what? Okay, really? You have to throw me a hard. I mean, I know I gave him NFL <laughs> questions, but can you fucking not? Um, well, this one may be a little bit more up your street. Question two. At TNA Global Impact 3, Jeff Hardy successfully defended the TNA World Heavyweight Championship against which New Japan star? This rings a bell. Okado? No. Global Series 3. Might be Monday Joe Okado. You know your Japanese wrestling, but I'm leaning with you. <laughs> well, because we're talking TNA, and, we're, and if I remember correctly, TNA, they had Shinsuke, they had Okada, they had Tanahashi. I only watched TNA at this period, too, and I don't even remember this pay-per-view. Tanahashi, they had, a young, they had a young Naito, a mad-ass young Naito. They had Okada. Who else did they have? Did they? Uh, was any of the old heads over there? What was the pay per view again? Uh, Global Impact Three. Oh fuck! So that's like, oh eight, twenty eleven, maybe even sooner. Yeah, when, when was Jeff Hardy TNA World Champion? Twenty eleven. To the ten, ten, ten. It must have been before Genesis, because I remember he lost the title to uh, Ken Anderson. Anderson. Mm-hmm. Anderson. <laughs> Anderson, Anderson. I always uh, got to do the two Andersons. Atta boy. Fucking hell. Come on. Okay, who <laughs> who would have won the fucking TNA championship? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Pause. Jeff, Jeff successfully defended it. He successfully. Oh, pause. Okay, I was about to say. Had my brain flip sideways for a second there. I was about to say, I was like, well, Kurt technically was, but nope, that ain't working. Okay, so he successfully defended it against somebody from Japan. And I really want to fucking stick with Naito, but I don't want, I really don't want to be wrong either. I'm going to stick with you because. Because <laughs> I'm really trying to think. So, like, here's my, because I'm, here's my thought process. Here's, and it's like, 
Because again, I know I always make fun of the Okado. Because I know I always make fun of that. I know I know well of Naito's um, run. I'm pretty sure Tanahashi went too, but I, I'm also not a hundred because th- if this was oh if this was 2011, this was right during his rise. And you know what I mean? Like this is during when Okada or not Okada. This was when Tanahashi was coming ace in New Japan. So. Fucking shit, fucking shit, fucking shit, fucking shit. Um, cause that, cause it's, cause it's the boys. I think they want to fuck with me. I'm gonna go with Okado. <laughs> Locking awesome. that in. Yeah, let's oh, go with that. All right. I do um, it. Which one are you going with? Fuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm gonna go whatever. Go. <laughs> fuck. Okay, I just have to it's, it's, no it's the DDT intake. question all over again. It is the DDT question <laughs> all over again. Um, no, I'm gonna. I don't because I really don't remember Okada getting any real push. I remember him being like a mid card guy. So, I'll, yeah, I'll stick with Naito. Naito. All right. Yeah. It is definitely somebody you've already mentioned. Mm. And it was, as you said, a very young Tetsuya Naito. Fuck yeah. Two points. <sighs> go, my brother. Seven to go to retain, at least. Question go, three. Oh, on it. man. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert defeated Terry Funk at Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular for the title of what? Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. That's a very time. obscure question. Time. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert defeated Terry Funk at Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular for the title of what? What was he called after winning the match? Oh. What he was, what was he called after the match? Oh, bet. So this isn't a fucking belt match. This is a fucking, um. That's a name match. Like King so of the Rings. Um, not a death match, is that? Because that was Cactus Jack. But Terry Funk was the death match guy. He was also a death match guy. Um, but it's Eddie Gilbert. It's Eddie fuck. That's Eddie Gilbert. I don't remember Eddie Gilbert being a fucking a hardcore guy. But this also sounds. I'm trying to put my finger if this is AWA or or NWA. Summon summer sizzling spectacular sounds like a fucking AWA show if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> um, I'm, look, I'm looking it up myself. Obviously, in case anybody hasn't realized, these are not my questions. Yeah, for real. Um, I can tell. <laughs> fucking Eddie Gilbert. Eddie, motherfucker, where were you, Eddie? Where were you? This is not like NWA or AWA. Hmm. You're blushing. He's got a crush on you. Um, it's locked to take care of council. Damn, daily log. Um, I mean, I probably should mention this as well. It's not in the question, but the the match type was a Texas chain match massacre for the title of blah blah blah. Oh, chainsaw oh, for the title of Leatherface. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, that was what I'm thinking about here because it's. Uh, I want to say it was again. I can't fucking remember if AWA or NWA did it, but there was, uh, there was a fucking um. There was a goddamn. It was a fucking chainsaw match, or the, exactly what you're talking about. I think it's this exact match where the winner became Leatherface for Halloween or some bullshit like that, some stipulation. Because I swear to God. For a, a small run in NWA, yeah, it was NWA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was NWA. What? God damn it! Maybe it was NWA. That where uh, fucking Leatherface was actually a dude, but it was also played by a handful of different people. It wasn't just Terry Funk. Oh, but definitely wasn't WCW. No, this would have been pre WCW. Is it some r- r- mad, you know, like ECW? No, this this is this is going. 
if I'm if my brain is where I think I am right now, I'm early eighties. We're not even we're not in the seventies. We're early eighties. Where this is this is the peak of horror movies. Is if I'm not again, I'm stuck on the on the fucking Leatherface thing. Stuck on it. I think it's something mad. Because <clears throat> so obviously the match style suits me like an extreme sort of of thing. <sighs> AWA or ECW, because ECW always sounds extreme and they're always up to mad shit. But I don't remember Eddie Gilbert and ECW. You got to li- listen to that name. It's Ed- We're talking about Eddie Gilbert. This is not a young fella. This is not a young fella. Just because Terry Funk was a hardcore legend doesn't mean he was, you know, ECW through and through. That's, you know, we got, you know, telling you this is old, this is old head shit. This is why they put this on here, because they know I know the old head shit. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> Fuck. This is almost as bad as these fucking uh, goddamn Von Eric questions. Yeah. Um, we want to call us off guard. Oh, fuck it. Here's the, I'm, I'm looking at the negative and I'm looking at the positive. It's either very obvious and I am right on the nail and it being the Leatherface gimmick or, or Chainsaw Charlie, that gimmick too. But then again, I'm pretty sure that was just a WWE thing. Um, yeah, Chainsaw Charlie is definitely WWE. So. Definitely not WCW. No. Nowhere near WCW. Would Terry Funk even in WCW? I'm really uh, trying to think. No. I, Wasn't I, I don't. I want to say no. New Japan, no. His his mm. Japanese run was uh, uh, um, All Japan. I think uh, it's, it's more like. War. Once I give you the answer and tell you where it was and when it was, it's all going to make a lot of sense. I'm going to go submit mad ECW. You say it's ECW, but what is what did they what the, the the question is is where is the title like what what title did they win? You said it was a chainsaw death match. A Texas chain match massacre was the match type, That's- and the winner became named something. I'm, I'm going to go on record. I'm going to go submit mad ECW. But obviously, I'm going to listen to your opinion as well, my tag partner. But that's what I'm saying, though. What, what name did they win? ECW? That's not a name to win. <laughs> All right, so it's uh, not the title belt that won. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's, it's what title did they win? They won a fucking, what it like, sounds like a gimmick. They yeah, won a gimmick. Kind of. Or maybe it was fucking craziest motherfucker ever. I don't know. Um, this is a pet coon. I'm fucking stuck. I'm, st- I'm stuck I'm on st- Leatherface. Well, you've got a two question safety net. So, I mean, you could either throw something wild and obscure out there or skip this one. You positive Chainsaw Charlie was just WWE? Yes. <laughs> Say it was for the name of Leatherface. Are right, you going? The winner became Leatherface. Sure. All right. Um, well, you you were kind of right with NWA, and you were kind of right with ECW. It was very early ECW NWA Eastern Championship Wrestling in the early nineties. Ah, see, so yeah, later than I thought. Uh, so Eddie Gilbert defeated Terry Funk by touching all four turnbuckles and became known as. Where is ECW famously from? Philadelphia. The king of Philadelphia. Oh, okay. That's so, what I would never Once guess. you know all that information, it makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, super early EC dub. Okay, I got you. I got you. Uh, I also got a point that there was another match on this card where Miss Peaches defeated uh, Terrible Tigra in a catfight humiliation match. Terrible Tigra. He said terrible Basically, tigra. it sounds like it was a bra and panties match. <laughs> it sounds like it exactly, <laughs> exactly what it was. <laughs> All the brawls and the uh, panties. All right. Um, so you still got two out of ten, and we've still got uh, the, the, the five questions to go. Next I, I question. Five, six, seven. Six. Six. Seven. Wait. Right. Oh, we got, ten, we got ten questions, right? Oh, you still yeah, got seven three. questions. Three. Three. First got say. <laughs> okay. Four, next four, question. Four. Brock Lesnar and Sean Stasiak defeated the Hardy Boys in under seven minutes at Insurrection 2002. True or false? Right. True. 
And what, so what was the timing? Brock and Sean Stasiak defeated the Hardys in under seven minutes. True or false? Under seven minutes. Well, Lesnar was a killer in 2002. I don't recall that match going on for long. But Sean stays. But seven minutes against the Hardys in 02. Again, against the Hardys in 02. I don't know. And and Brock randomly teaming with Sean Stasiak. Man, it's Stasiak. Stasiak. Meat. Stasiak was so I said meat. That whole gimmick where he kept trying to attack the Rock and just kept running into walls was hilarious. I think he was having, who was it? Marlena and Jacqueline by his side, shagging him. <laughs> Bastard. Oh, PMS, yeah. PMS, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, all right. True or false that Brock and Sean Stasiak won the match in under seven minutes, defeated the Hardy Boys? You were gonna... very confident in that true you were, Bob. True. True? I'll go true. The match was under seven minutes. It was six minutes, 42 seconds. Super but close. it was the Hardys that won. Did oh, you... shit. Oh, because they pinned Stasiak. I they? think they pinned Stasiak and then Brock just beat everybody up. Oh, yeah. Brock. Hey, we're, kill it. we're sticking on two. No more safety net. This means you have to get every question right from here on in. Next question. I think we've mentioned this recently. Who defeated Rikishi to become King of the Ring in 2000? Kurt Angle. I'd not disagree with Confident. that. That sounds about right. <laughs> Kurt Angle, confident. Straight in there with that one. And yes, it was Kurt Angle. And then, of course, oh. he tried to repeat the King of the Ring the following year before Shane screwed him. God damn it, Shane. All right, you're on three. Uh, next question needs a little bit of math work. How many people have won the King of the Ring? How many different people? Owen, Abel, Does this even count the crap ones that was before the one just just gone by? King and Queen of the Ring. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, hold on. How many do you fucking know? Because I okay. So Owen Hart, I, like I'm trying to go as early back as can be, and okay. it started in what the 80s. Yeah. Let me let me just double check that this includes pre pay per view King of the Ring. Say. That's before pre live events. Um, I'm really trying to think here. Um, I know if the order from 93 to 2002 without. Yeah, know. it it does include pre pay per views, <gasps> so in the 80s as well. Well, Haku definitely, because he was known as King Haku, wasn't he? King Haku is one. Jim Duggan is the original, if I'm not mistaken. Bret Hart. Bret Hart, Owen Hart. That's in the 90s. Didn't Brett win started it? in 85. Started in 80. Is it 85 or 83? Didn't Brett win it twice? Brett did win it twice. Brett won it twice. So, I'll know the ones from 93 to 2002. Brett, Owen, Mabel, Austin, Triple H, Shamra, Billy Gunn, Angle, Edge, Brock Lesnar. Seamus, Bad News Barrett. Xavier Woods, gone through the most recent. What do you want? 14? Oh, yeah, it doesn't include Queen. It's just the Kings. Regal, that's another one. What do you want? What is that, 15 or 16? I'll, I'll, I'll stack it. So, <laughs> confident with Haku. Confident with Duggan. Brad, Owen, Mabel. Austin, Triple H, Shamrock. Billy Gunn. Yes. Angle. Edge. Lesnar. Um, Regal. Regal. Um, Seamus. Seamus. Wade Barrett. Yep. Booker T. King Booker. Booker T. Can't forget Book- Booker King Booker. King Booker. King Booker. I love that gimmick. Um, I'm on 17, but I don't feel like that's enough. Xavier Woods. Did Nakamura win it? Because he came, because he came King Nakamura. Corbin, King Corbin. Yes, King Corbin. And Gunther was the most recent. I 
I, I, I'm, I, th- I know we're gonna miss one, am we? We got Baron Corbin. We got Brock Lesnar. We got <clears throat> Owen Brett. Mabel. <sighs> Who else in the fucking early '80s won the fucking thing? That's my, that's my worry. Oh fuck. <laughs> That's harsh putting it way before that and before the premium life events. I don't know. So harsh. Duggan. Okay, I I don't think Come this on. is gonna affect the answer because they didn't do it every single year. So I will tell you the first one was in nineteen eighty five. Okay, good, good, good. I'm glad I was right on that part for my brain factor. Um yeah, they did Duggan they did skip a couple of years. It did? A few times they skipped a couple of years, yeah. Hogan never won it, didn't he? No. Didn't yeah. King Kong Bundy win it? No. That was just it. I think that was just a gimmick name. He was a runner-up. One year. Now, Bam Bam was a runner-up in 93. Bam Bam Sundered. Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, uh, Randy Savage. Randy Savage. Forgot about Randy right. Savage. Yeah. Fucking, uh, what number are we on now? I think we're on 19. Um, um, right. Let's start the count. So Haku. Duggan. Fuck. Savage. What else? What in the fucking... Don Morocco. Don Morocco. I think Morocco was wrong. <sighs> Who else had a fucking king oh, gimmick in the 80s? I was going to say, think of Kings. <laughs> when the fuck did Harley Race go to WWF? <sighs> did he fucking... W- God damn it. <sighs> when the fuck did Harley Race go? When did Harley Race go? Was, Harley Race was in the fucking 80s. It was mid-80s Harley Race, wasn't it? Did he win King of the Ring, though? I'm not sure. When, he went back to NWA in the 90s, wasn't it? Oh, he yes. had to have won it, though. I, th- I swear to God. I'm picturing everybody with the, You know the stupid WWE thing where they have all the pictures of the guys? I'm yeah. envisioning every different one of them dudes with the crown. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just going to count for why what we've gone with. So, Haku. Go ahead. So, Haku. Duggan. Morocco. Savage. Brett, Owen, Mabel, Austin, Triple H, Shamrock. That's 10. Mm-hmm. Billy Gunn, Kurt Angle, Edge, Brock Lesnar, William Regal. That's 15. Wade Barrett, Booker T. King Corbin. The thing is, I don't know whether Nakamura won the King of the Ring. I think he just won to beat Corbin, I think, to become King Nakamura. Xavier Woods. Wait a minute. No, the- no, because Nakamura, no. Nakamura, it was it. Wasn't that Finn that won it, not Nakamura? No. Didn't Finn win it in Saudi Arabia? I uh, don't think I know Xavier Woods definitely because he was King King Woods, didn't he? And Gunther is the most recent. Yep. I think there's like one or two missing, so it's twenty at the minute. But did you count? Uh, did you count Savage? In Morocco. Yes. Okay. It's twenty. Oh, we're gonna miss one, aren't we? Ted Debussy, twenty-one. Because <laughs> he fucking yeah no he if I want to yeah 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 he <laughs> wanted to twenty one I want to say twenty one I can't think of nobody else dude nobody else if there's somebody else in the eighties we missed either I got somebody wrong in the wrong time or because the only other guy I could think of is like Tito Santana I think maybe he won King of the Ring but twenty one sounds perfect. I don't I don't see more than 21. And yes, I know that it was happening from 85 to fucking recent, but I want to say it took a fucking major stand off for like eight years and then started to back up when Austin won it. 
I think we'll go with that then. 21. We need it. You watch Beyond Lucky 21. <clears throat> you going with 21? <sighs> the power of the, the blackjack. We need you. Watch out, see. You should have added Tito Santana. Oh, f- it was 22. Damn it. Um, yeah, Brett did win it twice, 91 and 93. Don Morocco was the first. S- somehow you almost got there, but Jim Duggan never won it, and Haku never won it. But you almost, got, Jim Duggan, but you almost uh, got the right number. The Royal Rumble? Yeah, Jim Duggan won the first Rumble. Um, Haku did technically become king after Harley Race was written off TV. So he took his crown, but technically he, he didn't win the King of the Ring. So there was 22 out of 23 tournaments. Brett won it twice, um, which means you cannot match Cypher and Travis's score. But let's just see how close you would have got with the rest of the questions. Um, next one. Jeff, actually, we just mentioned this last week, I think. Jeff Jarrett has won the most King of the Mountain matches ever. How many? I've lost anyway, so maybe I should just guess. <laughs> uh, how many would there have been? I'm sure we mentioned this last week. King of the Mountain. There's been holy shit there's been 12 actually 13 because we had a women's one too oh great a queen of the man theoretically yeah which was won by jordan grace uh, uh, i think it's, it's he's got a one at least half of them because obviously he had all the power in tna <laughs> in his early days trying to look up how many king of the mountain matches there's been without trying to find a winner and that's not Helping yeah, me. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Sorry, I just put the phone back down. Um, <laughs> he's one. I want to say like five, but that sounds like way too fucking many. Because well, then again, I also have this utter hatred for Jeff Jarrett. So any 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 wins for him is too many for me. Um, Spend my day working. <laughs> five, five, seven, nine, twelve, forty-seven. 47 King of the Mountain match. I'm just kidding. Um, fuck it. We should have added one more. We're going to subtract one. Let's go with four. Four. You should have subtracted one more. It was three. Oh, damn it. He's been in four matches, though, but he lost one of them. Three. I figured he would have been in all of them. <laughs> what was it? Fucking bastard. Uh, next question would have been at Slammiversary 2018. Sammy Callahan lost his hair due to losing to which luchador? In a mask versus hair match. Honestly, that was Penta. Well, it's not TNA at the time. Yeah, it was Pentagon. Yeah. It was like, I remember that I was during the fucking um, Lucha Underground. Uh, oh. Or right after, sorry. Well, we already know the answer to this one because we just got it. Who was the first ever King of the Ring winner? Sure, Don, Don Morocco. Don Morocco. My bad. Wrong fucking tournament. Rumble. Duggan won the Rumble. Rumble. <laughs> and final question would have been Baron Corbin made his first televised debut in WWE in what year? Oh shit, I was there. Uh, he was, I was a, fucking he was there. NXT <laughs> 2015. Well, I know he was a he was a killer in NXT. Not NXT though. He said fucking. Well, it I include NXT, yeah. Oh, fuck. All right. Does he have the? He have the? Was that the? The lone wolf. The lone wolf with the motorbike as well. When in, oh, that thought yeah. that was was sick. Yeah, it was. NXT uh, 2016. I'll go with. No, that seems way late. Seems way late. He was on the main roster in 2017, I think. Yeah, I go to SmackDown. He had that horrendous gimmick at the end of 2018. This is when (laughs) SmackDown Live became unbearable. Frank off the block and go. It's 2016. (laughs) Let's go with it. That sounds. I'm I'm over here underestimating myself. Yeah, take more numbers off. uh, 2013. Ah, see, I knew it was before. Um, so in the end, yep, um, Cypher and Travis Anderson are the new tag team champions. Uh, turns out it wasn't that close, but man, those are some tricky questions. 
Mm-hmm. We'll get them back. Oh, trippy. We'll get them back, baby. Yeah, this means Cypher now joins Moses as the only two-time tag team champions. This should fail. We'll get him next time. We will get them back, my man. People get the wrong impression about Max Ross in podcast. We're a non-violent form of entertainment. We never use sex to enhance our image. As podcasters, we understand the importance of being positive role models. We're wholesome, family, entertainment. You son of a bitch! The 40 year old fucking virgin. Oh, you fucking did. We're trying to make the world a better place for mankind. (laughs) Mike Rustling has a new attitude. Get it? Then it's probably not for you to get. This is your Max Wrestling Overseer once again. Sending my best wishes to Mr. Beer in the Knowledge Championship match tonight. And also to announce that at Money Shot, we will see the return of the Champion's Mountain for the Knowledge Championship. So best of luck to whoever wins. Welcome back to the Cap and Mo Show along with Beer this week. This is your captain and make sure you are liking and subscribed on YouTube. Follow us everywhere and for all the information that you need, go to maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com. That's right, make them clicks happen. And still to come, the Knowledge Championship will be on the line. My man Beer has a chance to get some gold back on his shoulder. And we also get to see Chris Reed stepping into the cage against myself. Let's see how the fuck that thing goes. But first, it's double predictions week, so let's take it uh, night one. Let's start with tomorrow night's TNA against all odds. Oh. Pay-per-view predictions. And we don't have the best of luck predicting TNA pay-per-views, fuck but... No, uh... <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of matches here that could go either way, so let's get into it. Um, there's, there's seven matches, one of them being the pre-show, which is Sammy Callahan versus the Octopus, Jonathan Gresham. That's a hard call. Um, this is a fucking pre-show match. Yeah, for me, Gresham recently came back and he's been more of a silent assassin type of wrestler, so. Uh, I think he's on the verge of a well, not in the midst of a push. So I'm, I'm going with Gresham. I like that. In the midst, yeah. Gresham seems like the way to go. You know what I mean? Oh, Gresham. Good because he has the first name. Good me. So <laughs> hey, there you go. My man, Nine brothers. Um, also, both would not Jordan, say no to Jordan Grace. Grace as well. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> okay. I All right. No rash That's... before. I promise. Uh, it's probably going to go in the match order that's listed. So let's go. Eric Young and Josh Alexander versus ABC, Ace Austin and Chris Bay. Oh, see, now you're going to bring out the team that I love too much that I can never say if I can know to. These guys, I swear to God, they always lose when I don't want them to lose. They always win when I think they're finally going to lose. <laughs> oh, God. Um, it's Josh Alexander, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I'm driving at. It's Josh Alexander. Um, but Eric Young is. Thanks for people over now, don't he? Well, I'll go ABC. Yeah. There, there's been a little bit of tension between ABC lately. So, oh, again, right, yeah. it, it could go either way. But I don't think they're quite ready to pull the turn trigger yet. So, I'll go with ABC too. Yeah, I think we're, I might be in that boat with y'all just because it's it's their their issues have not been something of, of new. You know what I mean? They've always had a little ego issue with each other. So what happens when you put two awesome singles guys in the same uh, fucking conversation? Ace Austin's always had an ego. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, we got Steve Macklin and Mike Santana versus the Rascals. A lot of tag team matches on this show. Mike Santana has been doing trying to do something on TNA television for fuck as long as he's been there, mm-hmm. and 
the rascals I don't fucking think they're really getting too much of a push. I think they're gonna be ones I'll be jumping to be in the um, NXT thing. I think they'll join up with Wesley. Mm. Yeah, That'd be I'd, friggin' cool. I don't necessarily think that means they need a win though. And yeah, same. Yeah. I think Santana needs to push more because he's recently come back. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Santana. And who's who's his who's his team? Jeremy Macklin, St- Steve Macklin, oh, Steve Macklin, yeah, Mr. Perazzo. Macklin, there you go, that guy. Santana, <laughs> Mr. John Perazzo, damn bastard. Yeah, lucky some bitch. Yeah, he is. Oh, damn it. Okay, uh, this one may be a little bit easier to predict. Mustafa Ali versus Trent Seven for the X Division title. My man, Jesus Christ, Ali. <laughs> My man. Look, I love, I love Ali to death. I do. I, I'm also a massive Trent Seven fan, and I wish he would pick up a dub here, but it ain't gonna happen. Because again, we talked about it beautifully. This guy's on a fucking lightning course. Mm. He ain't got nothing. He's the man. Love Trent Seven, but Ali's unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Ali. I would just pay anything to see him and Javon Evans in a match. I just pay. Him. He said, "Sign me up." He did, Mister Beard. Oh, sign me up. Uh, or Wesley. Just sign me the fuck up. <laughs> okay, second title match of the night. Uh, the Systems, Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards defending the tag team titles against the Nemeth Brothers. What was I just talking about? Who was I just talking about? The Nemeth Brothers. Now they're all over the goddamn television, getting shot at the tag team championships of the world. Um, and I, ex- I absolutely smell a title change. And that's yeah. I was leaning the same exact way. It's, it's strike while the iron is hot, as they like to say. Now, again, we are shit at fucking predicting TNA. <laughs> <laughs> so watch them like break up or something. But no, I, I, I'm going to go with the Nemeth brothers. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, obviously, there's a reason that um, Nick Nemeth went to TNA. He didn't win the world title, so it makes sense for him to win the tag team titles. Yeah, um, I don't think he's ever won a tag title with his brother. And also the system have had them for a while now. Has he had he ever ever won tag title, period? Did he ever win tag title in WWE? As Dolph, I want to say he did, but I can't think who with. That's um, what I'm like. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he did. But again, yeah, I don't know with whom. Bobby Roode. Dirty Dogs. Oh, yeah, of course. The oh, Dirty yeah, Dogs. Duh. I fucking love that tag team. They <laughs> I, m- I miss Rude as a wrestler, but great so producer so far. He has. He's been killing it. Uh, okay, we got only two matches left. We got to get through these predictions quick because obviously we just did the trivia and we got a lot more to get through too. And we got another pay per view. So, open challenge for Jordan Grace's knockout title. How crazy would it be if it's Roxanne Perez? Doubt it. Doubt it, but Aww. it'd be crazy. <laughs> going to be Peyton Paxley or Natalia for me. Um, mm. I can't see it being Roxy unless Jordan's going to get that win back. But I'll go Jordan, no matter what. We, yeah. We also saw Ash by Elegance uh, make her NXT debut. Mm. That's right. <laughs> I have seen her somewhere could before. could not get over. Oh. <laughs> there there was a time when I really win. liked Dana Brooke. I thought it was Dijal Shaw at first, and I remember I thought, oh, it's Dana Brooke, isn't it? That's Dana Brooke. Vic, Vic Joseph bots it. He went, Dana Brooke. Oh, Ash by Elegance. I was like, Vic, you botched it, man. Oh, jeez. I'll be honest, I didn't recognize her at first either. I didn't, to be fair. Oh. Um, she slimmed either. down a lot. Yeah, uh, good for her. She's a, but. It's Tony Storm from Wish. <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, I don't know who decided to go with this Ash by Elegance gimmick, but I I, I don't think it's working. I, I, I want to say Sean, but I also want to give Sean the benefit of the doubt here. <laughs> I'm going. If it's all um, the NXT, it's going to be Tatum or Natalia. I would love to see Natalia, though, because she, her and she said she always wanted to face Jordan Grace, but I think that would probably be a match of the night candidate, but I think I'm going to go Jordan. Do we definitely think it's going to be somebody from NXT or just... An indie darling or a free agent? No, NXT. There is going to be talk about someone from NXT because the way Tate and Paxi eyed up that TNA title. Not uh, Battleground. Yeah. I'm going to go Tate and Paxley from NXT, but it's going to be Jordan. 100%. Yeah, no matter who it is, I'm not going TBA. Jordan's got to retain. 
Absolutely. I've also oh, seen God. people complaining that she lost to Roxanne. Uh, people are going to complain about this one. But she didn't lose clean. Like we just said, there was outside interference. So she was kind of protected. Speaking of that, I need a rant in a bit. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I meant to say, I'm going to give her points later too. But we'll get to that. Yes. Uh, final match to predict. Moose defending the TNA world title against broken Matt Hardy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, Matt Hardy. I think it's kind of obvious. They need the, as as uh, as they were saying with TK, they need the the faces to push for the network. Congratulations, this is your face to push for the network. Matt Hardy, broken, old as fuck. Matt Hardy it, will be new TNA champion. It is also his second attempt at Moose uh, since he came back to TNA, and Moose won the title, of course. At shit, what was the pay per view when they rebranded? That's a kill. Now it's a kill, yeah. So that was like that was the, the start of, of the year. So he's been champion almost half a year. It's a decent ring. Long enough. I'll go. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I was I was gonna go with Moose, but when you mentioned like TNA trying to make new partnerships, it makes sense to go with a recognizable name like Matt. And then you can already spin that crap right into the fucking NXT or whatever. Trick there you go. Yeah. That would be sick. Especially oh, geez. Picture broken Matt turning him up in NXT as a TNA world champion. It's a possibility. But let's go with Broken Matt. Um, I don't, who the fuck? I, we forget his name already. The new booker for TNA because it's not Scott Demore. Exactly. He's not probably going to fuck Demore us over. Yeah, not Scott. He's Man. apparently still on the contract with Anthem until 2025, so he can't be can't Scott WWE Demore or AEW until 2025. Which sucks. Because I'd have loved... Even wherever Scott Demore goes, you're going to have bangers. Yeah. I end up in AEW. Factual. And from fashion man. All right, then that is all of TNA's against all odds predicted. It is of course tomorrow night. Hey, why the fuck did they do pay per views on a Friday? Uh, they're idiots. I watch. Don't they know we do this show on a Thursday? Bastards. Only gives us twenty four hours to predict it. But anyway, before we get into more matches, let's recap this past week's AEW and kicking off with El Jefe's Rampage report. This is Rampage, baby. All right, all right, all right. Let's jump into the Rampage Report. So, again, Penta opens up the show, this time defeating that guy, Andy Williams, with a fear factor. Later on, the Acclaim beat a bunch of Jahoobs. Uh, Max Caster wins with the mic drop. We got the Gates of Agony looking absolutely strong. Loving this team. They defeated Private Party with a dual power bomb, And Juice is loose as the Juice and the Guns defeated a, a, another bunch of Jahoops. Again, remember, this is di- this is Rampage. So there's going to be lots of Jahoops choppers. Uh, and he pretty much did all the work. Looked absolutely excellent. He's draped in gold. Can barely look anywhere. But yet he's still the most charismatic bastard. In that entire group. And in the main event, and in a good one at that, Mina Shirakawa defeated Serena D with a figure four driver. Yeah, a figure four driver. Marina Shirakawa, Mira Shirakawa, I should say, should be getting uh, very over very, very soon. So that was part one of this week's uh, AEW recap. I'll be back later for some dynamite, but you all know the gimmick. We got it's time to get on that course with the captain. It's time for the collision course. Collision kicked off with FTR versus Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta, but it ends in a time limit draw as Claudio has Cash Wheeler in the rings of Saturn. D- Dax Harwood asks for five more minutes and the Blackpool Combat Club agrees. However, Brandon Cutler comes out on behalf of the Young Bucks with the match contract, which states that this match was only scheduled for 20 minutes, not 25. Cutler then received a giant swing from Claudio, followed by a shatter machine from FTR. Backstage, Kyle O'Reilly talks about his match with Orange Cassidy before the Kingdom interrupt, 
and Roderick Strong says he can offer advice since he's beaten Orange twice. However, O'Reilly turns him down. <coughs> Chris Statlander defeated Robin Renegade with Saturday Night Fever, and after the match, Stokely Hathaway announces that Statlander is the first woman in the Owen Hart Tournament Cup. Cup tournament. Backstage, Willow Nightingale responds and says she's also entering the tournament. Dustin Rhodes defeated Johnny TV with the final cut. After the match, Dustin addresses Jack Perry and says he's disgusted at him for joining the elite and he hasn't sacrificed shit because he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and has never worked a day in his life. In a video package from New Japan, Zack Sabre Jr. challenges Orange Cassidy to a rematch at Forbidden Door. The premier athletes squash Trent Jordy and Dante Leon. Tony Storm defeated Lady Frost with Storm Zero and after the match she comforts Mariah May as she's caught in between Tony and, Mi and Mina Shiki Shirakawa. She then volunteers Mariah for the Owen Hart tournament. It's announced that Lee Moriarty and Action Andretti will face each other next week on Collision for a spot in the Forbidden Door ladder match. And Katsuyori Shibata is the cameraman for Samoa Joe and Hook's segment. Joe gives him grief about lacrosse before they charge into the Premier Athletes locker room and beat the hell out of him. Shibata tells Sterling that there's no crying in wrestling. And in the main event, Daniel Garcia defeated Tate Mayfair's with the Red Cross. Well, we're about to predict Clash at the Castle this week, so no raw recap, but let's jump into Beers NXT round. Let's jump into the last night on Dynamite. So Swerve Strickland opens up the show, fires shots directly at Will Ospreay, saying that he is a target you do not want to hesitate. He is then interrupted by the Elite, as he was talking shit about him. They uh, fire shots. At, he started shots at the Young Bucks. That's when they challenge uh, the five challenge or whatever for the blood and guts that's going to happen. They offer to have Swerve join. Do you want to join the champions? Do you want to have a, a, you know, be our fifth man? Um, all, he says no, pretty much. And they're like, well, too bad you just caught the bug, the injury bug. Fucking dumbest dad joke I've ever heard in my life. That's when the acclaim come out, make the save, and Christopher Daniels comes in like a fucking very skinny version of Triple H. Now get out of my ring. And I'm like, I just, I can't take him seriously right now. Give it a few more weeks, and perhaps <laughs> I will. So Jack Perry ends up hanging out, and this first match had way more blood than absolutely necessary, but then again, it had a Rhodes in it. And no, not yeah. that one, Dustin Rhodes. So uh, he gets busted open super early on. They even expose like concrete and work over it. Jack Perry ends up beating a bloodied Dustin Rhodes with a glass jaw knee strike and advances in the TNT uh, ladder match that happens uh, for the door. We go backstage with Renee, Kyle O'Reilly, Mark Briscoe, and Orange Cassidy are all back there. And this is a fucking wild one. Willow Nightingale has Orange <laughs> Cassidy's back. Walks in, proving that he has his back, and then fucking Mark Briscoe just goes hamburglar. He's all, dude, we got a, we got a constellation or something or whatever, and even fucking Kyle's like, constant. Con con literally, literally, everybody around right him just right, amazed bro. by what that promo. <laughs> my, the best part about this promo is my wife looks at me and like, what's his problem? I say, he's a Sussex County chicken. <laughs> she just shook her head because there is no explanation for Mark Briscoe. He's just the goddamn man. Uh, Roosh absolutely murders a fucking Jehoob uh, with the horns. He tries to continue the assault after the match. That's when MJF makes the save. Triggers a brawl that spills into the back. They're beating uh, freaking dude. Uh, all these security guards left and right. They're getting sl they're slamming each other through tables. They're literally brawls going forever. This is a, a the the classic got to keep them away from each other build that WWE does, and it's working beautifully. I cannot wait for them to finally come to blows. The Don, Fallis, the Don Callis family defeats Team he Cassidy as Kyle Fletcher gets the win on Mark Briscoe. This was actually a really good match. Um, the family then con uh, continue to assault before Willow, of all people, comes out. Or at least her music interrupts, but we see Chris Statlander drag her out onto the stage and continues the beatdown. So uh, it looks like we got another big, probably multi-man, uh, intergender kind of match happening at the pay-per-view. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Backstage again, Renee is talking with Ray Phoenix and he prepares for his match with Will Ospreay. And then that's when we get Shingo Takagi being announced as a part of the Owen Hart Cup. And I could not be more excited. The Japanese dragon comes to America. 
Christopher Daniels doing the best announcing that he can says that the elite will have an will have title eliminatory matches next week with all parties banned from ringside. So it's just like back in Japan, there is no outside interference. Um, Samoa Joe and Hook get the weirdest fucking intro music I've ever heard. All thanks to Shibata in these super <laughs> neon green shoes. They go out there and beat the Pyramid athletes with dual chokes. Uh, and Sabata is working the camera like a crazy mofo. They celebrate after talking about how good of a trios they can be. Mercedes Monet finally looks good in her AEW career, defeating Zeus with the moneymaker to retain the TBS championship. The only reason why this match looked any good is because the only real style that fucking Mercedes can work is Lucha Libre. And if you can't fucking uh, wrestle Lucha Libre with one of the best fucking Lucha, with luchadoras in all of fucking Mexico, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Backstage, Renee interviews Tony Storm about her match with Mina Shirakawa. Mariah May informs her that Marina will, or sorry, Mina will be on Dynamite next week for the contract signing. We also then got like a nice little uh, video package from her and doing all these cool pop words like sexy and shit. Just, you know, obviously angering people on the internet, these bastards. <laughs> Uh, oh, God, this stupid thing. So the learning tree, Jericho's <laughs> TV time happens, and out comes Private Party, and Jericho is criticizing them on their wrestling style and their lack of wins. Private Party tricked Jericho into climbing the ropes. That's when they fucking smash him down, and I laughed my ass off. And um, all of a sudden, they literally, because Big Bill and uh, uh, Brian Keith are outside the ring when this happens. He's all, this is how you climb the ropes. I'm going to show you how Owen Hart taught me how to climb the ropes. And I'm dying at this whole part. And then he fucking eats it. So, obviously, we're going to get a match between these guys at some point. Uh, this is the only time I will ever accept the Chris, Chris Jericho TV time bullshit. Like, as long as he gets hurt, you can have the segment all you fucking want. Backstage, the Bang Bang Gang challenged the House of Black to a match on Collision. And uh, the juice is loose, and he's crazier than ever. God, I love this guy. Daddy Magic on commentary. We get Danny Garcia soundly defeating the giant Nick Camarado, who once looked like a big hairy man, now just looks extremely hairy. Let's see, backstage, Pac then enters the Owen Hart Cup as well, reflecting on his recent failures. So hopefully he will be a nice stint in this tournament. I would love to see him and Shingo go at it. I think it would be awesome. And then in the main event, uh, with Swerve Strickland uh, looking on from the front row, Will Ospreay defeats Ray Fenix with a Swerve Stomp followed by a Hidden Blade to retain the international championship. After the match, Swerve continue, uh, confronts Osprey and verbally runs him down. But Swerve then turns to leave. Osprey snatches his title, poses with both championships. Swerve tells Osprey he's lucky they're still friends, takes his title back, and leaves. So obviously, history in the past. Hopefully a super great fucking match come at the end of the month, the Forbidden mm. Door. Still a little too early to pull that trigger, so I'm hoping for some chicanery so we can have another one. Yeah. Wait that was it. so smooth how he snatched that belt. Oh, yeah. Will's the man. He's He Everything is an he assassin. Um, hey. I think I said last week how much I kind of was starting to enjoy Jericho's gimmick. Uh, not not so much this week. It is a little bit hit and miss. But, like, Tony, if by some miracle you're listening, I think the best way to get this gimmick over is keep doing what you were doing last week. Just have Jericho walk up to random people backstage and give them shit advice. Well, it, it was kind of funny. But make sure he's yelling the whole time. Okay, thanks, Hell guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Keep by that show. Dweeb. So... Fucking dweeb. <laughs> keep by that show when we go to London. I'm just not going to sit with you. <laughs> I I'll sit on the other side of the fucking stands. <laughs> hey guys! Hey, Rizla. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh man. Um, man. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about this dynamite. Yeah, MJF and Rush, Rush. Um, Rush. that brawl was great. Really <clears> sold <throat> beyond the match. Can't wait for next week. Uh, MJF's in ring return. Fucking love right. I'm gonna put him with uh, Rush. Mm. Just to get him back into the. Swing of things. Yeah. Hard, hard hitting. All right, then. On to another pay-per-view. We've covered AEW. We've covered NXT. We're not covering SmackDown and Raw this week because we are predicting Clash at the Castle, Scotland. Mm -hmm. Squ pay-per-view predictions. Um, which they have infamously charged ridiculous amounts of money for and not sold a whole bunch of tickets, but... Scotland. 
And now they're in a really shit position where they haven't filled the stadium and they couldn't reduce the prices because they were that expensive to begin with. It would have pissed so many people off. So they backed themselves into a corner. I mean, I say stadium. It's not a stadium. It's an arena. Is this like Braveheart? Yeah, shell shot when I saw the price. Even I was going to try and even attempt to go, and I saw the price. I went, like, "No, you're all right, thanks." I could really? save it for all Why they charge such extortionate prices for once for, in a lifetime? Not even, not even camp. a big pay per view. I'm sure most of the people that were, that are going to Clash at the Castle went to Cardiff last year. Probably. The only um, I mean, it is a hell of a travel from. <laughs> from Scotland to the South of Wales, but even for us, we live in fucking Wales. It's what three and a half hours three, to yeah. Cardiff. Three and a half down the south. It's the only terrible. I'm only ever willing to pay over the odds is for WrestleMania. That's the only time I'm ever willing to pay over the odds. Yeah, if it was WrestleMania, I could maybe understand charging three figures for the nosebleeds. What but, the fuck? Oh yeah, they were in nope. the hundreds for the fucking the nosebleeds. Are we in no. the hope? And, and like I said, I go to a no, 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 no. We, game for cheaper than that. We're like second, well, first tier up and sort of like bang smack in the middle of the pitch. Oh, that's, that's fine. Watch me go to fucking Luton Town instead of that shit for way <laughs> cheaper, bastards. In the, in the words of Del Boy Trotter, sod Luton. Big up Luton. Um, but yeah, let's get into Clash at the Castle. Clash at the Castle. God knows how many freebies they're going to have to give out to uh, fill the hydro, but I mean, even TNA have filled the hydro. Yeah. You don't need to charge stupid money for it. No. All right, let's go with uh, a triple threat for the women's tag team titles, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. This is tough. Jade, as we have coined them yes. and trademarked and copyrighted versus uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn and Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Okay. Um, I mean, to my... Bef- well, before, way before we heard the um, the tragic news that came from uh, Alba Fire this week, I thought they were going to go with Alba Fire and Isle of Dawn anyway. Now I'm not so yeah. sure. If As long as Bianca or Jay don't take the fall, I yeah. Might- the surprise one, I think, and then I'll go Alba and Isla, and I think they'll drop the belt back to Bianca and Jade at Money in the Bank. Because my, my thinking was, if they're going to go with a title change, that would make sense of why it's a triple threat. So there's only two reasons they would go with a triple threat. To crown new champions and keep Air Jade looking strong, not have them take the pin. Or to have them win as just monsters. Would it piss off the fans, though? No, That's but like, I mean... That Alba and Isla not even being used on Raw. They weren't even used on SmackDown. No, they weren't. They were only, like, just become relevant on TV. And... Exactly. Obviously, they're in Scotland. Hometown. Home field advantage. I'm going to go Alba and Isla. Go yeah, with- my, my gut is going to stick with them, but my head's going, but what about Jade and Bianca? Uh, I'm just I'm I'm in the exact boat as that one right there because it's like I they just won these things not too long ago, I want to say six eight six eight weeks ago maybe two pay per views mm. ago, yeah back last year. It's a, it's a little early. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't Elba? Isn't she Scottish? Yeah. Yes. So, with that being said, and also if I'm not mistaken, so is also Piper Niven. Um. I don't know how many Scottish people you can actually have win. Yeah. I get it. It's not the Vince McMahon days, and we could probably get one win in, and the win should be the big one, which we'll talk about at the end. Should be the main event. Um, They've really so tried it, this. It's free title matches with Scottish people in it. That's, yeah, exactly. So it, I'm not, again, it's not a negative thing. I'm not trying to be negative about it. Yes, you can immediately do a quick turnaround and money in the bank for every single one of these titles. Um, I just don't know if that's. Again, you're charging a lot of goddamn money for the nosebleeds that ain't selling. So who are you popping? You know what I mean? Who are you popping besides the home viewers anyway? So as much as I want to go with the hometown crowd, I have to stick with with, with Air Jade just because, again, two months in. 
Um, well, neither of you have helped me because you've both picked my two options. Um, Sticking with Oliver and Isla. <sighs> I think it was going to be emotional for Alba Fire to win in Scotland to begin with, but I think it'd be even more emotional for her now after the, the week she's had. So um, it'll be a hell of a feel good moment. I'll I'll go with Alba Fire and I will don. Be surprised if they don't win. And again, like we said, they don't have to pin Bianca or Jade. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we're building towards Bianca versus Jade at SummerSlam. Yes. Uh, right. Oh. I'm cook. So I'm just checking the tickets now too. There's there's a thousand tickets left, so they're not that far off, really. They'll sell them. Yeah, right, I guess. They'll sell them. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's. Ooh. Mm. Sami Zayn defending the Intercontinental Title against Chad Gable. Absolute no brain. Chad Gable. It's time. Do it, do it now. It's time, baby. Yeah. If he doesn't win, I'll be very, very surprised. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, you can't extend this another pay per view, even though Money in the Bank wouldn't be too far out, if I'm not mistaken. Then wouldn't that be the next one? It's Money in, in the Bank is in the first week of July. So it's, it's in like, less than three weeks. Yeah, three weeks away. It's on okay. Heat Camp. Yeah, no, I. You do it now. You extend it three more weeks. We don't give a fuck. Just saying. Yeah, I'm going Chad. Killing son. I mean, they couldn't give it to Chad in Saudi Arabia because it was oh. Sami Zayn. So. Sounds it makes more well, sense. Scotland. Wait till now. Just because he's a ginger don't mean shit. <laughs> Chad Gable. And the pop Otis is going to get when he turns on Chad Gable. Oh. Boom. Please and thank you. Oh, I mean, okay, that's a full house for Chad. Let's go Chad. to uh, the other Scottish lady going for a title. Piper Niven challenging Bailey for the WWE Women's title. This I think I they've really shut the bed on Bailey's title ring. Mm-hmm. Yes. They have done next to nothing with her. I don't know how you do that, though. No. I, mean, I, I, I remember us being beyond excited when she won it at Mania, and all of a sudden now it's been because it's, it's to been, say the least. It's been all <laughs> well. They had the Queen of the Ring, um, and it was just all Bianca and Jade, and then of course somebody from Raw won the Queen of the Ring, which means they didn't really have anything planned for the women's champion on SmackDown. So now we have Piper Niven, probably just because it's in Scotland. It was nice. Just because. Nia Jax was on. Oh, Nia Jackson SmackDown, yeah. yeah oh, Nia- yeah, shit. Gone through. <clears throat> well, shows how much attention he paid to Bailey. Hey. Um. So yeah, the winner obviously gets Nia Jax at SummerSlam, and it's got to be Bailey. It's got to be Bailey to retain. I know Piper's also Scottish, but I don't think she's getting the home field yeah. win for this one. I think Chelsea Sorry, Green Piper. lost the match by accident. I am trying to help. The P. Yeah, I'm going to go Bailey. Yeah, me too. All right. Charlotte in the bank very soon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I quit match for the undisputed title. Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles. Cody. That's Cody Raheem Rhodes, please. Okay. Cody in the dream. He is he. He is the African American uh, world heavyweight champion that we all wish we had, we, we we had sooner. Oh man! And he is invited to the cookout. I'm looking forward to this match. The special like the match with backlash was ridiculous. Yeah, well, I mean, the match at backlash didn't have a story. Um, yeah. Maybe this is what they should have done to begin with with AJ and Co- and Cody because obviously Cody has not had a decent feud to get his teeth into since winning the title, which is what uh, yep. many people have complained about, that he's been a boring champion. But it's just because he's had no real rivalries. He's just gone from challenger to challenger. And Logan Paul was obviously all about the Saudi prince's wish. Mm-hmm. So, yep. first real feud, Cody retains. Um, yep. AJ as a heel is awesome. 
Yes. Exactly. That's like AJ's going to put on a great match. Cody's going to look great. They're both going to look awesome. Elevation on both sides. But yeah, Cody picks with Deb. Uh, which takes us to the main events for the world heavyweight title. The Judgment Day are banned from ringside as Damian Priest defends against Drew McIntyre. Yep. Oh, as we say, there's only one of these hometown fellas that can win or females. And uh, well, it's the big fella. It's in the match. <laughs> Drew would have got a huge pop if he'd have beat Roman in Cardiff last year. Mm-hmm. Um, he'd get, absolutely. even though there's less people, he'll get an even bigger pop in Scotland. I agreed. You've got to give it to him this year. This is the perfect time to give it to him. And then feud with Punk for the world yep. title. I already put in the chat what I think could happen. Drew McIntyre is a Rangers fan. Yes. CM Punk to cost in the match by wearing a Celtic shirt. Now that would be you know what? money. They actually released uh, a Clash at the Castle t-shirt themed on the Rangers shirt. And they had to I withdraw it because it upset the, the Celtic fans. I love this. Uh, but when no, football I'm, comes to Get that shit like off my WWE shop. I'm going to go Drew. But I think they'll do a turnaround because I don't think the belts needed at Team Punk and Drew McIntyre. It's not really because, I mean, my second um, prediction, my backup prediction would have been Punk shows up and costs Drew the title. But I don't think you can turn down that hometown pop for Drew no. winning no. back the world title in front of fucking Scottish fans. No, definitely not this time. Yeah, I'll go McIntyre. It does kind of suck because I think Priest is only just getting started, really, as a world champion, and I think he's capable of much more, but it, it does make so much more sense to put the title back on Drew now. Yeah, and we also have kept saying that he is the transitional champion, so... Yeah. Now is the perfect chance. We'll it was break. obviously to pull that trigger on the McIntyre Punk feud at Mania. And obviously, they have to get rid of the Money in the Bank contract. Uh, will Priest win the belt back, and then obviously he'll drop it then to Gunther. Hey, the, the money at the bank this year is going to be very interesting. It's going to be, yeah. <laughs> so again, at podcast from Mobile Nine back in you said Mark Chris Reed faced the captain for the third time and finally got the dub. His reward was a buy in the King of the Mike semifinals, right to the semifinals. But Chris still wanted to compete, so he chose an exhibition against the runner up between myself and Cypher. And as we could tell, 60 seconds made the difference. So you saw last week Cypher put out the victory. So now it's time for me to go one on one with the guy they pretend is a mercenary for the first time ever. Been 60 seconds, and I'm not here. But it is what it is. It's the cards I've been dealt. So let's play the hand. Chris Reed, the mercenary. More like a Walmart version of a hitman. Cosplay is Brock Lesnar, living in the middle of Podunk, North Carolina. Talking about, I got a wooden spoon, You know, for a mercenary, bro, you were, uh, you were overpaid. You were handsomely paid for a job you couldn't complete. But let's, but let's get to the nitty gritty here, bro. You called out the loser of the first round of the, this year's King of the Mic. And, and, and let's get one thing perfectly clear. I am no loser. What you have is an absolute uphill fucking climb. As stated in previous promos, I am the most accomplished competitor here at Max. I am an absolute motherfucking cornerstone here. Two-time television champion, inaugural television champion, current reigning, defending, beautifully might I add, uh, tag team champion. 
Hell, they renamed the show the Captain Mo Show, bruv. It's because I bring the views. I bring the clicks. I bring the entertainment. And the funniest thing is, Chris, is I'm still trying to figure out what it is you bring to Max. Because it ain't promo skills. And it damn sure isn't knowledge. <clears throat> Boss. <clears throat> boss. Yo, boss. Damn it. What, bro? What is it? What is so goddamn important that you need me right now? I am cutting a promo of a lifetime. You want the magic? Got in location. Here we go. <laughs> Should I be surprised? Can I be a little more surprised? You've got to be absolutely fucking kidding me. You waste my time. You call me out. And your fucking dumbass North Carolina mouth-breathing stupidity. And you can't fucking even show up? You can't even show up? Back up the shit you talked because you were prime dog ready. You was ready to go. So you know what? You want to play that game? I got a game for you. <sighs> Thank God for Facebook Messenger. Hit him. Use the messenger. Find the coordinates. Track that location. Do it the old fashioned way. You really fucking think you can run from me? Yeah, boss, I'm checking everything in there. <laughs> He's not where you're supposed to be. Looks like you know, Shug. I know you didn't expect to see me today. I know you were expecting Chris Reed. And for all the confusion and all the craziness of today, I also don't want you to think that this is in any way an attempt to sabotage you and Beer during our tag team match. This is completely separate and quite frankly, Everything I have to say right now doesn't even matter to you. It doesn't involve you. But to make it up to you for not having your match against Chris, allow me to do something unprecedented and give you your flowers. You see, Moses, you are one of the most decorated talents that we have. In Max Wrestling. You're one of the most decorated in accomplishments. And quite frankly I'm proud of you. I mean hell you started off as the top 9%. And look at you now. You're El Jefe. I'm proud of you. And you've done well. And for those reasons. On your grand accomplishments. Is exactly why I agree with you. That Chris Reed is not on your level. And allow me to explain a little further. Over the last few weeks, Moses, you and Dazzy have called me Travis the Coach Anderson. So, I decided I was going to do something with the name. And I took it upon myself to put Chris Reed under my wing. The mercenary is no longer the mercenary. He has to earn that name. He is Chris fucking Reed. 
And I'm not going to downplay any of his accomplishments here in Max Wrestling. He has done incredible work and has put on fantastic promos with not just myself, but with the likes of Dazzy and Phoenix and Chad and Corey. He's done great work. But, however, I don't feel the mercenary of old has taken it to the max. So, me being me, I thought he would be the perfect candidate to go under the tutelage of Travis the Coach Anderson. And I can't just allow him to just start off with El Jefe. No, no, no. He has to stay focused. And quite frankly, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why he has not won any gold yet. Because he has not been focused. He stays distracted with this match, this trivia match, promo exhibition, after exhibition, after exhibition. It's been non-stop with him. But he doesn't see the importance of this tournament. This King of the Mike tournament. He doesn't understand that he needs to stay focused. If he's going to go on and win the tournament and become the inaugural dual champion, he's got to stop. Take a step back. Not be distracted and worried about random exhibitions. He has to stay focused on the task at hand. He cannot throw away. He, he got advanced to the semifinals. That never happens. You have to earn your spot in the semifinals. That's how it's always been. So... I cannot allow him to throw that opportunity away. Not as I'm coaching him. So I pulled him from this match so he can start with the basics. Promo 101. 101. And he's going to win King of the Mic. He will become the new duel champion and then everyone will be ready to fear the new improved mercenary that will be Chris fucking Reed so Dazzy do me a favor don't hit my music don't hit Chris's music hit Chris's new music Thank you for joining us for Trivia Takeover Part 9. Congratulations on surviving. And again, we are not holding our breath for long because our next Max event is in three weeks on the 4th of July, no less. With the first ever Money Shot. Featuring predictions from Money in the Bank, which this year comes from Canada. Canadia, gotta love it. And thanks to that mass bastard run of the show, we found out earlier tonight that Money Shot will feature the return of champions mounted 15 questions and three lifelines will decide the outcome of the new or should I say of the knowledge champion yes and as we also heard earlier tonight mike larkin issued a challenge to chad malcolm the lawyer for the television championship now obviously uh i would have protected my dragon club stable mate if i was still calling the shots but anna mascaras has made it official and actually since chad fucked me over for the tv title at Full House, I'm good with it. Sorry, Chad. <laughs> Go to maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com slash money shot for more information. And before we go, there's just one thing left to do, and that is decide who leaves camp 
as Knowledge Champion. For only the second time, a rematch from promo series eight two years ago, the Phoenix defends the Knowledge Championship against Beer. And we have had assurance from Anar Mascaras that there will be no interference from Legion. Thank goodness, stay away. All right, question one, round one is breaking kayfabe. So there's two points available. I'm going to ask you a question with three options. One of them is the correct answer. One of them is wrong. And one of them is a kayfabe answer, which could not possibly be true. For example, if I asked you who has the record for the most intercontinental title wins, Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, or John Cena, Jericho would be the correct answer. And John Cena would be the kayfabe answer because he's never won it. Okay. Uh, and it's a similar type of question, too. It is, which championship did Kane win at WrestleMania 24? A, tag team. B, ECW. Or C, United States. When the ECW championship, but he's never been the United States champion. Be Chavo Guerrero in six seconds. Spot on with both answers. Two points. Round one is Breaking Kayfabe. Quick reminder for anybody that hasn't heard it before. Breaking Kayfabe, you get one point for the correct answer and a bonus point if you can detect which answer could not possibly be true. Question is, which championship did Kane win at WrestleMania 24? A. Tag Team B. ECW or C. United States he won the uh, ECW championship in like eight seconds. <laughs> and uh, I think the kayfabe answer, I'll go with United States. I don't think he ever won that one. Bang on on both. That's two points. Okay, going into round two, it is 2-2. Two, two. Round two is missing champion. Very much like uh, title sequence. All you have to do is tell me who is missing from this sequence of US champions. The sequence is JBL. Bobby Lashley and Mr. Kennedy. Who's missing? JBL, Lashley, Kennedy. Uh, is it a name I can't mention? Is it? I don't know. Uh, JBL <clears throat> I know JBL won the belt Mania Of a name I can't really mention I don't want to get banned Last year was United States champion Kennedy I'll go Benoit And I don't recall Kennedy ever being United States champion Oh, the ones I mentioned are all U.S. champions, but I left somebody oh. out in between them. Oh, between them? Yeah. Twixt. So, either between JBL and Lashley or between Lashley and Kennedy, there's a champion I didn't mention. Oh, uh, can't be heel and heel. JBL. Got me now. Um, <laughs> uh, that's just bugging me now. Um, now I'll see now. I got someone like Finley. Like Finley? Finley. You want to go with Finley? Final answer. Final answer, Finley. He loves to fight, and he defeated Bobby Lashley for the U.S. title before dropping into Mr. Kennedy. Oh, he loves to fight there, laddie. Did that, he? That was a wild guess. Because I knew I, Finley I was, was, dude, I was digging through the archives. <laughs> I was. Yeah. I've never seen somebody so surprised by their own answer. I knew he'd Yes, that's um, three points to you. Round two is missing champion. So who is missing from this sequence of U.S. champions? JBL, Bobby Lashley, Mr. Kennedy. Who is missing and where? Um, 
Finlay, I think. Yeah, yeah, he beat Lashley for it at some point. And then he lost it to Kennedy in, I believe, a triple threat match on an episode of SmackDown. Finley is right. That puts you on three points. Okay, final round is best of seven, which is literally seven questions. Ooh, here we go. Question one. Who was the first person to main event back-to-back WrestleManias? Back-to-back WrestleManias? Hulk Hogan. Yeah, nice easy one to start. It was Hogan. Question two. Who did Eric Bischoff fire from Raw in 2005 for failing to defeat John Cena? Jericho. Yes, thank guys. I was going to say Umanga, but okay. That puts you on five. I love the way William Regal said Umaga. Umanga. Umanga. Dude, where's the end? I love you, Regal, but come on. (laughs) Question three. Pete Rose was attacked by Kane at three consecutive WrestleManias. Which was the first? You can give me the number or the year. 1998. Oh, you can give me both. Yes. <laughs> uh, that Jesus. Puts, that puts you on... Wait, three, four, five, six. Next question. Name the missing member of the job squad. Al Snow, Blue Meanie, Bob Holly, and Scorpio. Or too cold, Scorpio. And the missing member. I think I know exactly which guy you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, I want. I'm gonna double check. Come on, Google, don't let me down. There's another one. Yeah, there was five altogether. To be honest, I always forget about everyone except Al Snow and uh, Blue Meanie. I remember Bob Holly. <clears throat> oh, it's not who I thought. Holy fuck! <laughs> okay. This is <laughs> It's not on me now. Fuck, I shouldn't have seen it now. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> it's not oh, Crash Holly. Shit. Definitely not Crash Holly. Definitely not Gold Dust. I don't even remember that far back, to be fair. <clears throat> reminds me of the fucking beating from 2019. Oh, fucking hell. So Snow, Holly Al Snow, Blue Meanie Bob Holly and Scorpio Scorpio being in it Come on, I'm sending you the answer Through the brain waves Hell, if this helps your process of elimination, my original guess was Stevie Richards. But then I was like, wasn't that the Blue Man group or whatever? Yeah, that was was the BWO. BWO. Blue World Order. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to have to pass. All right. It was Mo. Gilbert. Gilbert. Dwayne Gill. I know of all the fucking (laughs) names, bro. That's what I said, too. (laughs) Last question of the title. But it's okay. You still got three questions left. And I guarantee you, Moses is going to know this one straight away. No, Japanese. It's a Japan question, isn't it? Who is the only person to hold championships in WWE, NWA, and New Japan all at the same time? Okay. <laughs> NWA, New Japan, and WWE. It's a lot easier than you think. Yeah, I didn't specify which championship. He just held a championship in WWE, NWA, and New Japan all at the same time. I never wrestled in Japan. Yeah, he did. You know what? He didn't wrestle in fucking... He didn't wrestle in fucking... Uh, he went, I don't know. Was he a champion in TNA? Rick Flair... I don't think he won a title in TNA now. I was going to say AJ Styles, but I don't think it's AJ. <coughs> oh, this is bugging me. This should, like, stick out in your brain. I'm going to go AJ I'm Styles. I'm seeing him right now with all the belts. I'll go AJ. AJ. 
it was not AJ. Um, but yeah, I think of somebody in a picture holding many championships, it was Ultimo Dragon. Uh, when he won the J Crown. Never mm-hmm. Still two to go. In what year has the WWE Championship changed hands the most? Oh, shit. That's a good one. Changed the most? Yeah, changed oh, hands shit. the most times in one year. Jesus. That fucking has to be. So, like- so think of a year that had a lot of title changes for the WWE title. Well, it's definitely not on the Triple H's fucking year. <laughs> it's intense, isn't it? Right, okay. And it definitely wasn't the last two or three years. Definitely not. <laughs> nope. Right. Does this include the Universal title? No, just the WWE Championship. The WWE, okay. Or F. Right, okay. I'm trying to think of what year was Hot potato the most. I'm going to go submit my, like, 2000. Because I remember the Rock and Triple H changed hands more times than a hot potato. You going with 2000? 2000. One year out. Ah, it was 1999. 1999. Uh, it changed hands 11 times. Damn. Or if you count Mick Foley winning it. Uh, on ah, January 4th It was pre-taped in 98 So it would have been 12 But yeah It was 11 times in 99 officially Final question uh, You're on What do you want? One, two, three, six. four Yeah, six No Ten. Yeah, six Six points Final question Who holds the record For the fastest main roster Triple crown in WWE? Fastest triple crown. So a world title, mid title, and a tag title. It's definitely not Angle. It's not wrong. Oh, I don't know if it'd be him. That's, but he was fast. That's a good one. It's not Sean. Not Brad. Definitely not Eddie. I'm thinking of new guys, so I hope I'm wrong. New guys. I'm thinking of like guys that won it super fast that came from NXT. Definitely not Joe. Corbin's never been champion. Rollins. I'm just gonna go with a you know. It's not Roman. Rome can jump quite late. I don't think he used ever tag champ though, was he? Yeah, he was with Rollins. Okay. With Rollins. Uh, I'm gonna go with Seth Rollins. Just Seth Rollins, so- all right. Uh, it is somebody that's currently there. Um, it was CM Punk. Oh. I think I he did it did in it. eight months, eight. maybe less. Yeah, uh, he won, I think he won the World Heavyweight title first, then the IC title and the tag titles. Yeah. Yeah, my guess All right, Priest. final Maybe score is think. six. Isn't the end of the world yet until we know what Feeney scored. Third and final round is best of seven, which is simply seven questions. Question one, who was the first person to main event back-to-back WrestleManias? Hulk Hogan. Yeah, nice easy one to start. Question two, who did Eric Bischoff fire from Raw in 2005 for failing to defeat John Cena? Chris Jericho. Yes. Question three, Pete Rose was attacked by Kane at three consecutive WrestleManias. Which was the first? You can give me the number or the year. 14, I think. I think it was like uh, right before his match against Taker. Yes, first one was at 14, and technically he attacked Kane first at the other two. But anyway, question four, name the missing member of the job squad. Al Snow, Blue Meanie, Bob Holly, and Scorpio. 
Oh, you bitch. Um, uh, Gilberg? I'll say Gilberg. It absolutely was Gilberg, or Dwayne Gill. Next three questions may be a little trickier, so here we go. Who is the only person to hold a championship in WWE, IWGP's New Japan, and NWA, all at the same time? I first thought it was Ric Flair, but um, I don't think he spent time in New Japan. Um, Andre did win the WWE title, but he immediately sold it. Sounds like something Hulk Hogan would do. Sounds like something Hulk Hogan would have claimed to have done, but it was Ultimo Dragon. Next question. In what year did the WWE Championship change hands the most times? I'm going to say 2009, because I knew it changed hands a couple of times at the beginning. And it sort of slowed down a bit in the middle, and then they were playing hot potato between Orton and Cena towards the end of the year. And then Sheamus won it to close the year out. Oof, you were 10 years out and only one title change out. 1999 had 11 changes, unless you count Mick Foley, which was pre-taped in 98. But anyway, final question. Who holds the record for fastest triple crown in WWE main roster history? I believe that's CM Punk... At 220-ish days. It was CM Punk. Mm. So Feeney wins by just two points um, in that final round. Congratulations, Phoenix. You are still the knowledge champion. Five-time knowledge champion. Well, I'm going to have to sit by the rule, and I said, I will not now challenge for the title for two years. Lord almighty. So, I'll be eligible now for the 13th of June, 2026. Aye. Well, there's, there's other titles, and you still have Iron Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, but as for the Phoenix, you don't have much time to relax, because in three weeks, you've got Money Shot and a Champion's Mountain. We just need to find out who the challenger will be. But, for now, thank you for joining us. I hope we rocked you harder than Jordan Grace's ear. Mm. <laughs> Oh, Don't wear piercings now. in a wrestling match. Don't do it. Before we close this up, let's find out what Host Mo and the TSK have for you, Pencil Neck Geeks, with a roundup of Click This. Oh, right. So there's a whole lot going on. So we're actually going to do it. We're actually going to do a WWE show. Class at the Castle happens, as we talked about this weekend. So the boys are going to come back and hit that review, probably on a lovely special Father's Day. For all you fathers out there, you're going to get a lovely review of that. And then we'll be back in two weeks' time to cover Forbidden Door. Um that's pretty much what it's going to be. It's going to be a three-man show, though, for the Clash of the Castle. There's going to be no Harold. He is hanging out overseas, hanging out in Barcelona today. I'm mad jelly of him. Uh, he's traveling all around. But he's got to hit Italy letter, all this other stuff. So good for him. Enjoy the travels. And then as for, uh, as again, all the lovely places I'm talking about, Italy and you know Barcelona, Spain, all that stuff, transfer windows wide fucking open, fam. And uh, there was some very big news from Man United. So with all that being said, as you can tell, my man Beer's looking all the stuff up. We got to find some time <laughs> to get on and get on to the max footy so we can uh, we can talk about the transfer news. We can talk about uh, we can talk about uh, Undembele getting released from Spurs of our fucking $69 million signing four years ago. And he do fuck all. Now he's out. So there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's a lot of rumors happening. A lot of guys that could be leaving rival clubs to go play for another rival club. There's a fucking, from what I'm hearing, there is a major star in the Prem that can absolutely walk away from a hundred million dollar contract and come play in San Diego, California. So God only knows what's going to happen. The only way to find out is to follow us on all the socials, especially Max Football Pod on the Twitter. Check out Max Wrestling UK, Captain 502, and SMR Podnet. Hit all the beautifully done website, maxwrestlingnet.bleeby.com. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, follow button here on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, we there. Come get us, come hit us up, come follow us, check out the Facebook group, be a part of the gimmick, and maybe you too can challenge challenge for the knowledge championship.
Damn right. And that's it for this week. That's it for Trivia Takeover. And again, our next special event, Max event, is in three weeks at Money Shop. But join us next week for all the fallout from this week. Plus, the King of the Mic continues in the semifinals as Beer goes one-on-one with Cypher. Yeah. You've been watching the Cap and Mo. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. Bang. Just because we lost it don't mean we won't get him right back. Oh, yeah.